dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time and welcome back everyone Last time on Ghosts of Saltmarsh, the party continued their investigation into the mysterious Thalassic League, specifically its origins here in Saltmarsh. Having been tipped off that the answers my, may lie among the dead, may lay among the dead? I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to get hung up on that. Uh, it's, the one, it's one I can never remember. There may be answers among the dead. Having heard that information, they went to the cemetery to investigate the Chandler grave sites. The Chandler family having been pointed to as tied to this Thalassic League, this mysterious cult. They found an interesting pattern among the gravestones and that there were every 25 years, a person with the name Chandler or the last name Chandler was lost at sea at age 18. They found a number of these stones pointing to this pattern. They also saw that, at least based on the burials that they saw, no one has been lost at sea named with the Chandler name for about 27 years, um, give or take 22 uh, years past uh, the previous pattern. Thinking this may have some connection to the events happening around Salt Marsh and the ill omens that they have uncovered the group then went to confront the chandlers with some maybe success uh, depending on how you look at it and that they um completely seem to ignore their concerns um after bringing this to their attention they left and ended up speaking to the youngest of the Chand, well, the second youngest of the Chandler family, um, young Kaylin, who was supposed to go to sea, had trained to be a sailor her whole life, but was never allowed to go. Something changed at some point, and now she's just kind of been an outcast of her family, just kept at the home or on the shop and not really allowed to do anything or go anywhere. So naturally she ran away with the group to become part of the crew of the Pixies Fury, hoping that maybe some nautical adventures could help reunite her with some of her other family members. Small detail that should also be mentioned. They heard numerous stories from Kaylin about a place called the Chateau. Apparently all of the Chandlers go to this place to grow up. And her older family members occasionally travel there for months, sometimes years on end. And her cousin has just given birth to a young child and they are about to leave to go to the chateau so that the young child can be raised as all Chandlers are raised out on the island. Now, the group decided that um, this, there actually may be some sinister intent behind this, or maybe the island that they call the Chateau itself. So they decided to begin sabotaging one of the boats in order to delay the departure to perhaps um, either delay a ritual or to give them more time to investigate. Um, I'm not actually completely sure what the rationale was um, the second one. sabotaging the boat. Yes, to give them more time to investigate. So that is where we resume. Um, 
those of you aboard um, Pixie's Fury, you have seen um, your um, you have seen your friends go out um, swimming, actually, beneath the waters at night, out on a mission to sabotage a boat. Um, Melvin and uh, Mariah, you stand on deck with, um, I believe, just Talise and then um, Inaris, correct? Saran, did you go with the, with the sabotage party? Mm-mm. Oh, so you're because I don't well. believe in sabotage. <laughs> so at this point, it's Talise and um, Nether and Priyan. Um, gotcha. I will uh, amend that by saying that I have not come out of my cabin the entire day. You still haven't. Okay. Nope. So we'll we had a, a bit of a moment before with the um, with those out at the dock. Those of you still on the boat. It is silence and it is pitch black and there is no sound coming from where your um, companions decided to go um, subnautically along on a mission of sabotage. Is there anything all of you would like to do or simply just wait patiently and hope for the best? Rain is just puzzling over why everything has to be done by nefarious means. <laughs> Why couldn't we just be honest? Um, it's a little unclear to me, but uh, why are what what are we doing to sabotage the ship? What did, what was the plan? Do you know? Um, as soon as I heard sabotage, I immediately stopped listening because if I'm not aware of it, then I'm not party to it. You guys hear glass breaking. And then I a muffled fuck. Oh, Mariah's <laughs> up. Oh well, maybe we should get her input on this. I'm not feeling too great about she not is, knowing what's going on. She is the captain, so that makes sense. Um, you said Anaris is here. Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, she stayed. I got to keep an eye on my 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 protege. I mean. Friend. <laughs> um, Anaris, um, do you know what the plan was? Um, something about not a meow. Something about <laughs> sinking a ship. Oh. To, to be fair, we were pretty clear about yeah. what we were going to do. Yeah, it's, uh, that is... It's that is the case, yes. Okay. Um, uh, in character, I'm a method actor, and so when I did hear sabotage, just want to make I stopped sure. listening. So <laughs> maybe no. Kay maybe Kaylin understand understood to, to give you guys the input uh, info or oh, and Eris understood. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's let's go talk to Mariah Saran. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't like the sound of this. I've been trying to remain blissfully ignorant of any wrongdoing so okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go and knock on mariah's door in that case what uh M mariah a moment door cracks open what uh -huh. I think that there might be a problem. To go on. Um, well, uh, you see, Supreon and, and, and Nether and Talise, they all, they all left to go sink a ship, apparently. I, I don't really know what's going on exactly, but it doesn't sound like a good idea, especially because they went alone. How long ago did they leave? DM, how long ago did they leave? Do I know? Um, this is probably right after they left, so maybe a few minutes. We were already dead, a couple minutes worry. ago. We were already rolling forty six drop lowest. <laughs> uh, do you think we should 
follow them. Ow. Sorry. I mean, I, I was going to ask you because I, I know that, and I've confided in you that I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to learn more about shades of gray in the world instead of everything being just black and white. Um, I don't know if, if any of that's making sense in your current state. It seems like you've drunk a lot. Um, but I was feeling as though maybe it was wrong that we were trying to sabotage the ship. Uh, so I stopped listening, but I also feel like it's my duty to protect the people that we're with. So I don't know. Do you think they're in danger? What do I do, Captain? If they're yeah, no, they're almost certainly in danger. Let's just be honest about that. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, can, can call it. Do me a favor, please? Actually, can, I pull my hand up from behind the door. I broke a glass and my hand is just bleeding <laughs> profusely. And there is oh. so bandage it for. <laughs> Let me Thank see you. it. Thanks. Sorry. Fell. <laughs> Sorry, mommy fell. It's, okay. it's fine. Did you I'm doing great, guys? Um I mean, we can probably I don't know, follow them. Not you can swim. I can't swim. We need a fucking boat. Okay. Saran starts walking back up to where the deck is, clearly bent on jumping off into the water after them. Uh, uh, Seren, I think I think the idea was to get a you know a rowboat. Oh, Mr. Jolly Boy over yonder. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, but um, I'll just I'll just wait for you in the water. And she continues up and splashes down to the water. There she goes. Ow! What do we do about the kid? Who? Kaylin. I repeat. Who? The kid, do we leave her here or do we take her with us? Kid, there's a really cute cat in my bedroom. You can go stay there. Are you talking about Melvin? He's literally right here. No. I don't think she's met her. <laughs> At this point, you see a um, young woman with a uh, sort of a burlap sack slung over her, length of rope, um, a couple other items uh you know slung across she's got all the look of someone running away from home or heading aboard their first voyage oh i know that look she's got long um shoulder length pretty just past shoulder length red hair and an eager look in her eyes and she kind of looks around oh am i am i okay am i am i allowed to come aboard Oh yeah, some you did that minutes ago. Yeah, come up. Are you? Oh, okay. Is um. Hi. Uh, Kaylin, this is Mariah. She's our captain. Mariah, this is Kaylin. She's my uh, protege. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. I'm. I'm. I'm so happy to join you. Really. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Melvin scurries off to go get the uh, ship's ledger and add her to the roster. <laughs> gotcha. Important things. There you go. <laughs> um, bunks are down below. Pick one that doesn't have anyone's shit near it. Um, you can put your yourself stuff next comfy. to mine. Oh yeah, I brought my own. Um, I brought my own hammock. I'll, I can just sling a berth with in with the rest of the crew. Great. Um, you know what? Um. At a time that's not right now, I'm going to ask you what kind of stuff you like to do on boats. Um, and we'll get you sorted on uh, where you should be. That sounds right, Amaris, right? Yep. Okay. Um, thanks. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's just, I don't know why. Are you talking to me or? So, oh, God. Um, do you want me to show her where the bunks are while you get everything else ready? Please. Okay. Kaylin, come with me. We're okay. going down below. 
It's been about five minutes now since your companions have left. And Eris, you show Kaylin down. She knows the drill. She looks around and finds a uh, two anchor points uh, in the ship. And she drops some of her things and slings up a hammock and stows her um, belongings away sort of in a corner where no, no one else... No one else has their things, and she's ready to go. All right. Um, just stay out of sight. Stay down here. I mean, if you're running away, I suppose you don't want anyone to know that you're here. I I doubt they'd chase after me, really. It's probably a relief to them to get me out of here, out of there. Eh, people are funny. Just in case. Stay down here and out of sight. Okay. At least until we get back. And she, um, in the meantime, here, oh, I'll, I'll hand her a little book. That's a little pamphlet. There's some drow words on there. Learn those. Okay. A couple of them are swears. Enjoy. I can't read. The translation's language. next to them, and Anaris just leaves. Oh, okay. Do you carry that pamphlet on you at all times? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and you you leave the uh, below Learned deck area hearing steps. her very softly under her breath trying to sound out drow curse words as, <laughs> and, as they are phonetically written in common next to him. So. Such a good influence. So crew on deck, are you planning to follow your comrades or um, um, leave them to their sabotage a point of clarification um how far out is the target of said sabotage from our present location i believe i said last time is about a quarter mile quarter mile ah and it's not out at sea it's it's just it's... along the the salt marsh harbor just yeah okay. and it turns out it wasn't actually a docks. ship it's actually a jolly boat it is huh. not a large boat that they're loading up that is correct Okay. Well, I guess we'll jolly boat it up ourselves. Okay. Um, so um, you you have one that is fully prepped and ready. Um, you can get some crew to um, lower it down. It has its step down mast ready there in case you were needing to put it up to do some sailing on the wind for some faster speed. But you also have the regular oars. Um, it lays down quietly into the um into the the salt mar into the salt marsh sort of brackish water there and you can all get in Ooh, does, does this make ready. us pirates mariah why would it make us pirates <clears throat> we're going to go sink another ship right i mean lots of entities sink ships and aren't necessarily pirates that's Always like a square that. rectangle situations pirates sink ships but not all sunken ships are sunk by pirates I've always heard that pirates do sink ships but also loose lips sink ships So I've heard that one too Yeah, there is a degree of truth to that one good uh, to know okay um I guess I'll take an oar. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so you guys get um, probably three quarters of the way there where you are now able to see the Chandler house softly illuminated from inside. Um, typical evening lighting. It's not that late. It's probably, it's not midnight yet. It's probably more like 1030 or so. The sun has really just disappeared the glow diminished from the horizon and um the salt the lights of salt marsh sort of up on the hill are slowly starting to go out but most of the chandler house is still lit and you hear then a um a voice sort of echoing out across the water uh well first of all are you using the sail at all are you trying to be quiet and keep um hidden for the most part yeah let's let's not uh sabotage the sabotage gotcha um 
who is who else is rowing with you, Mariah? You know, I was going to say that I was going to ask Sarayan if she would actually hop up in the boat with me and help me row. Oh, yes, yes. I, I know that humans are, are not as strong as tritons. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep. Hops up. Flabby muscles, every one of us. I mean, they're not. Okay, yeah, I think. Well, you said it. Okay. Um, <laughs> anything you do, uh, you know that. Mariah, you know that the being careful with your oars is very important and not um, in in a silent uh, rowing operation of which you have taken part in many um, in and out of coves, sort of skirting around customs patrols at the major harbors and such. So this will require a check from both of you for how silent you can keep the oars as you slowly dip them into the water and row along. Who oh, forgot the oil penalty? yours? What, what did What's you say? What's my penalty for having spent the entire day in my cabin drinking? Um, if uh, that, that, that's up to you. I know I kind of led you with that one. So it's, it, that's a character decision on your part. It's, However, uh, I feel as a smuggler, you've probably done this as many times drunk as sober. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will straight roll then. Uh, what's the, uh, what is this, athletics? Uh, sleight or of hand. Sleight of be, hand. Um, to match the rhythm of the uh, the water, okay. not cause a splash, and sort of slide the blade down into the surf and then right. pull the boat along. And that will be for Sarayan as well. Uh, Meanwhile, okay. we currently have a Kraken hype train going. I saw that. I Thank you. I'll just go back uh, real quick. Uh, we've got some gifted subs from Opera Sun. Pingu, thank you for the bits. Pixie, thank you for the scores and buckets of bits. Um, thank you, Chael, for the uh, for the gifted sub. Um, many, many more. Pixie, more gifted subs. You guys are amazing. Manx, thank you for the bits. Thank you for the hype train, guys. That means we're going to be giving away some what? more cracking dice yeah. so we're currently on a level two best. which is ten dollars level three is 15 level four is 25 and a level five is 50 dollars gifted credit nice awesome thank you for the us. thank you for the host too panda we love you too well, um what do we got for our sleight of hand checks i have a whopping 12. Oh, I accidentally rolled twice, but it was 15 for the first roll. Okay, so Mariah, maybe the uh, maybe the liquor is getting to you just a little bit more than you thought, and there's you're not quite able to um, keep up. Part of it, though, is that Sarayan is really strong, and so you're having kind of trouble keeping up with her rhythm as she's just able to fiercely pull this oar through the water, propelling the ship, or propelling your jolly boat um, uh, swiftly through the water. You make a little bit of sl splashing, but you're able to just keep up enough where the two of you have um, succeeded enough to not really take much notice or create any sort of obvious sound. Once you get in, as I said, about three quarters of the way, then you hear that voice that I mentioned at the beginning, sort of rumbling out across the water. Hey, who's there? Talon, there's something weird going on here. What? Whoa! What's going on? And that's where we shift the camera back over to Prion and Nether and, um, and Talise. Um, Talise will be played by me as you are all under and hear this man this guard sort of cry out in a bit of panic as the darkness centered on nether's familiar completely engulfs this man and you hear a few muffled voices now speaking from out at the um the chandler house itself what do you guys do believe I, uh, that Nether me and looks at, yeah. were in the process of like drowning the boat with shape water sure and water is yeah cascading up on top right now you can see that um 
let's say there's about 20 feet actually between where the guard is and where the actual boat is. I think you guys are underneath. Um, so it is visible to you. You can see the um, water sort of coursing over the top of the gunnel, as small as it is, into the boat to begin to flood it. Um, anything else, Nether? What? So Prion and Talise are just gushing water on top. Um, it is a pretty um, solid boat, though. It'll take a, a few rounds of this to get to the point where just by um, uh, uh, flooding it, that it will sink on its own. Um, is there anything you do to contribute? Well, given that Doll is my eyes and Doll is in the midst of darkness, she is just going to have to take it on faith that things are happening that she expects to happen. She has no frame of reference for anything is or what's happening. So she's oh, just, yeah, the, I suppose you are in the darkness, darkness is just going to stay in there. That the, the last, the last she saw, uh, doll invisibly got close to where the guard was maybe about five feet over his head and then revealed the shell that has darkness cast on it and did darkness over and then did all of this did, has done all the things since then that's like he, he went forward and touched and touched the um the guard to get the uh, find out that he was lawful evil and we've had our conversation where he's talked about a, a dark god of the depths so nether feels like we're on pretty solid ground as far as <laughs> uh you know who a potential enemy might be she's got no problem with sinking the boat at the very least it's not her intention to engage in any kind of combat here because she still doesn't know for sure what all's going on. Gotcha. Um, uh, so, yes, having that, there's been that tense exchange with the guard. And that's right. Thank you for reminding me. Um, uh, the voices ring out, uh, ring out. He calls out to the town, uh, to the um, main house that says, Talon! We're under attack! Someone's trying to sink the ship! And you now hear um, voices from the inside grow louder. The rest of you on the boat now hear this as well. There's a giant globe of darkness sitting at the edge of the dock. There is water with um, sort of just seeming to be possessed of itself, jumping over the side of the, um, the small jolly boat. Uh, that's sitting at the end of the dock and you see about four bodies or four figures with torches beginning to run down from the house to the deck that's a problem um maybe maybe we should not get too close let let uh want to go uh Get a little closer, just in case. Uh, oh, we'll stay here. Aye, aye, Captain. And uh. Sarayan hops in to the water, and you can see just a little divot as she heads straight to where she wants, where Mariah wants her to look. Uh, I've got a really bad feeling about this, Melvin. Yeah, I, I don't like this. It's fine. It's all perfectly fine. Uh, well, we're we underwater. What can they do? We we definitely shouldn't be seen at this point. No, 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 no. Might be, no, might no, be no, good no. to back up a little. In fact, yeah. Okay. Yep. We'll just kind of keep the boat a little bit out out of the way, to the side. And uh, okay, as you're watching, um, <clears throat> your. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I just a really quick question. Um, about how far away would you say we are at this point? Uh, probably about, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm terrible at estimating distance. <laughs> That's real totally life. fine. <laughs> um, and, uh, I would say probably about 300 feet. Okay. Um, as, uh, as Sarayan is, uh, swimming off, I really, really quick, um, point my finger out to her and whisper under my breath and she can hear me as if her, my voice was um, coming right behind her ear. Um, let them know that we're out here if they need to get away, okay? And you see from inside 
or from up the water. <laughs> the she just goes you put your a arm webbed, up. a webbed little hand. <laughs> it's like what? All right. Heard. So in, make a um, make a stealth check of your own as you approach the docks. Okie dokie. Um, as you are approaching, you can hear the voice now growing louder, and you hear this uh, this first guard say, "Hi." There's some sort of... I'm blinded! I can't... I can't see! And you hear this splashing sound, and you all in the water now can feel it as another body has just... <laughs> crashed into the, uh, into the ocean next to you, um, and is able to quickly find his way back up and sort of grab onto the dock, at least you assume, and it's just sort of kicking there, treading water. And say, it said... Uh, and uh, you hear the familiar voice of Talon saying, um, it's some sort of magic. Stay out of the darkness. Search for whatever it is. And someone get on that boat and start bailing it out. Quick. Two of the guards run um, around and jump in the water, um, swimming around the globe of darkness to try to get to the jolly boat and they get out to it and sort of look in as this water's coursing in some of them um uh, grabbing some um uh some pieces of rope and actually starting to tie it to the dock to prevent it from being dragged all the way down so they begin to pull it closer and start securing it even more so i just want to be clear so i'm picturing this in my head correctly where was the guard so he was on the edge of on the end of the mostly towards the end of the dock towards the um, end of the dock okay beside him beside the dock was the ship itself and um unless you were to shift the globe of darkness or have your um so, dot shift it over to totally encompass the boat the boat is about 20 feet long um so and darkness would, is uh, a is a 40 foot um oh, diameter, a 20 foot right? radius 40 foot diameter oh so yes you could get um most of it encompassed then okay yeah yeah my mistake so they do seem wary of this darkness some of them putting their hand in and trying to investigate it you notice that all of these um guards and talon himself are holding crossbows at this point uh slung in one hand torches um in another um all but or most of them have torches uh Chandler himself, Talon Chandler, the patriarch here, does not have one. And they just um, continue to uh, um, look about, um, I guess, kind of helplessly. Now, Sarayan, as you were approaching, what was your stealth check? So I rolled two. Well, it's like I rolled once, but it gave me two numbers and one was a 15 and that was in a like a lighter color and then the other was a six and that was in a darker color. So I'm going to say 15 and hope you accept that. <laughs> well, I don't think that's exactly how that works. Uh, that's really weird. The though. lighter color means it's the better number. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what kind of armor are you wearing? At this moment, am I wearing any armor? Did we get my armor back? I believe... Did you put any on after that? Or did you just turn it over and go armorless? <laughs> it turns out that I just went armorless. <laughs> Good thing you did too. Because <laughs> if you had your armor on, that would have been a six. But you just you're just swimming like a regular triton in the, like in a the fish. sea. You're just swimming using like your... You're just, using your fins you're just fishing it you're just fishing it like a triton and um you Bomb feel quite agile under the ground under the um under the uh under the water there under the just, sea it wasn't about yeah i like i like that and you are not seen and you can get up closer um you mostly see these guards just standing around looking um hmm. and waiting crossbows now at the ready Okay, can I see anybody from my party? Or just the guards? Uh, I believe your party is probably in the darkness spell as well. It depends on how deep the water is. Uh, if the guy is standing on the... About, it's about 15 feet. So. Okay. 
So with the guy, if if the if the if the darkness starts five feet above the guy on the dock and then goes out twenty feet, and we're at the bottom of mm -hmm. the on the on the water on like the the sea floor, we would be out of the darkness. Okay, so you do see your companions there, just uh, along, kind of in the um, grassy, silty bottom of the uh, harbor there, just below the rim of the globe of darkness. Okay. It's at that point that you do see one end of the boat that they were sinking just begin to tilt and slide down into the water. Okay. Um, so because of what Mariah told me, I'll swim down to my group and I'll just be like, hi, I'm not here because I don't condone this, what we're doing morally, but I care about you as people and I'm learning about shades of gray. And, uh, Mariah said that if you need help that we're here and I was supposed to let you know that. Okay. Good luck. Bye. <laughs> She's swimming back up to the surface. Nether, how long does your darkness spell last? That's a good question. Uh, I think it's just it's it's a a um, racial feature, but I think it's just the darkness. It's ten minutes. It is ten minutes. Okay. So the group is still out along the docks. The one guard who was encompassed in the darkness has followed the edge of the dock just bit by bit till he's finally out of it and now climbs up onto the dock with the rest of the group um they're all still keeping watch just kind of looking at the um looking at the darkness shouting um confusion back and forth to one another talon chandler the leader seems to be a little bit more calm collected looking about in the water now the boat is sunk what do you guys do with the darkness spell how do you proceed from here well once the boat is sunk i suppose we'll just start swimming away and doll will take the shell that has darkness cast on it and put it back underneath some of his clothing which will then render it invisible and he will fly away. And okay. the rest of us will swim back to Pixie's Fury. All right. Yes. Anyone swimming away will also have to make a stealth check to ah. get away from the dock. You are conveniently hidden under many things now, but making Is your way back. Is it just a straight out. roll then? If we're deep down in the water? Uh, do you mean minus, I've got disadvantage? Um, I mean, um, the thing is, right? The, I can understand what? on the gra walking around, like you know, you hear the metal clanking and stuff. Yes. Would you hear that underwater? But then I suppose you're not as agile underwater. I suppose. Yeah, yeah that's kind and of the how moon, I the come moonlight. out. Of you have to move moonlight, very yeah. forcefully, so it's more about the displacement shush, shush, of the shush. water and the wake and everything. Yeah. Uh, well, while the uh, party is rolling those those rolls, um, thank you all for the hype train. Um, I've been keeping a running total. Um, so we've got, um, I'm not going to say totals of bits and everything, but we've got bits from Pingu Boy, that's me, hi, uh, Pixie, uh, Manxworks, Snake Spinner 007, uh, Duskbound Dwarf, uh, Sleepless Master, and Yanaril. And we've got subs from uh, FX Webby, Pixie, uh, Chael, not a mimic, Opera Sun, and Snake Spinner 007. So thank you all for that. And we'll be giving away some dice after the break. Everyone on this stream right now has a D20 inspiration. Woo! Thank you all. Use. And oh, um, after this little bit, there will be a healing potion that we will distribute. That is thanks to all of you. Amazing support. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. You guys are the best. I'm um, <laughs> I rolled a 18 on my stealth DM. Okay. So, so last week you let the people roll with advantage. Does that mean I just roll with a straight roll then? 
Yes. Okay. Oh, is it advantage? Yeah, I rolled a 17 on a dice. Well, which well, would be 17 total. So I'm trying to... I'm, I'm thinking um, this water for the stealth check would be considered... Uh, you do not have the darkness spell traveling with you anymore, I don't right. think. No. Um, so this would be... All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll for this actually. Um, and while you're rolling, uh, thank you, Fabled Forty Two, for for the raid. Uh, What's up, Fabled Forty Fabled Cheers, guys? Fabled Forty hey, Fablers. Fabled Forty Two! <laughs> Exclamation mark! Giveaway Fabled into our 40s? chat so that you can potentially win a gift certificate to Crack and Dice. Yeah, we've got a uh, fifteen dollar gift certificate and a twenty five dollar gift certificate that will be given away after our break. So the water has thus far been cons uh, been talked about as mostly clear and such, but there is potentially murky areas where you could stick to to get some obscurement to get advantage on your self checks. Um, obfuscation. I'm, ob yes, obfuscation. Oh, I never gosh. obfuscate. Uh, I'm going to roll a percentile die here, and we'll see um, how that comes out to be. Uh, just 50 50 percent chance um low 50 it's obscured i have a 66 so no it is um it is a regular stealth roll no advantage or modifiers since you do not six have the darkness for everyone six okay um any anyone else let's see i see i see one from sorry what were, what was everyone else rolling on their escape stealth? Belize would have to roll as well. Um, as well. I rolled an 18. So that's a 6 from Prion, an 18 from Nether, and then whatever Talise rolls. Okay. And your familiar is just leaving its darkness object, whatever it was to, they used. To, puts it away. And the invisibility spell takes effect over the thing that is on his person and therefore no longer works okay great so the the globe of darkness vanishes they all run out and start looking about crossbows at the ready six hmm um and i did not hear i'm sorry um Serain, what was your stealth roll your second one you made it in Stealthily, oh, you have to make it out. I didn't realize that I was included in That's that. That's all right. She, she rolled... Did you not roll twice for stealth? No. No. All right. I thought, I thought just the one was going to do it. <laughs> well, you get uh, to roll again. 13. Because I'm not wearing armor, right? <laughs> um, That is... Correct. Hell yeah. That is correct. Um, however, both you and Prion now have um, you. You can hear voices saying, "There, swimming away under the water. <clears throat> Get a look at him." And uh, then you hear the familiar twang of crossbows launching bolts in your direction. Um, you're about. There's a Kraken in chat. 30 feet away from them right now. What's up? There's a Kraken in chat. Oh, is there? Welcome, Kraken. You, Kraken, by the way, you have been summoned by a mighty hype train. Um, it so will. You, I'll we, play it again. We are there we go. <laughs> excited to bestow the generosity of the, of the great Kraken upon this audience. So, oh, wonderful viewers. But before that, we have Crossbow Bolts, two coming at... Um, Prion and two coming at Serain, who is unarmored, which will be interesting. Except for my Spell. natural armor and the, the guards? Persona's protection. Oh, right. <laughs> Serain, I have a 23 Incredibly and a 7 to forces. hit you. Well, of course that hits me. <laughs> All right. The 23 is going to hit me. Uh... Uh, 10 points of piercing damage as a crossbow quarrel streaks down into the water and finds purchase right in the back of your leg. Love it. Okay. 
and Prion. This will be interesting. Uh, <laughs> Tweedle get cover? Uh, no. Uh -oh. um, you are in the middle of the water at the moment, and they um, surprisingly adept at using these crossbows to um, to uh, send the bolts underwater. Now I have a critical hit on you, Prion, and then I have a 23. Shield. Okay, so a um, bright light flashes underwater as one of them is deflected. However, you still take... Moment. Uh, uh, 21 points of damage. That was... Um, a good damage roll on that critical so, hit. Sorry, what? That was for one crossbow bolt. It's a critical Heavy hit. crossbow. Damn. 2d10 plus 3. <laughs> Rolled 18 on the dice. Damn. So, you your blood begins to sort of spill into the waters. But, assuming you both take the dash actions away... Yeah. Um, yeah. The sound of their shouting will begin to lessen as you guys make it away towards your um, your smuggler's boat. And Clever just Darkness for good measure, I you think from from a major conflict so far. But I think you do just feel just as to... if they've probably gotten a look at you. So, mm -hmm. well, never mind then. The two of you who rolled poorly, at least. Yeah. So, what what time is this? Is night time, isn't it? Yep. So, is it dark? Have they got dark vision and stuff like that? Then, if they can they see us, shot pretty accurately. Okay. Damn it. You do not know if they have dark vision, or maybe they're just really lucky. Well. Or have magic goggles. We, uh, I don't know that we would be aware that the jolly boat was there, so we'd probably just go back um, to the Serene ship. Serene came in. Oh, that's uh, right. That's right. So, uh, Nether surfaces up on uh, next to the jolly boat. We said, well, it's still unclear as to whether or not they're doing this of their own accord or they're being forced to, but at least they're not going anywhere tonight. They seem to be about to, though. They had a small boat packed, but it wasn't packed with much, not for a long journey, just enough for, like, a picnic. Although, hmm. I remember there being quite a lot of luggage being packed. So, somebody clearly thought that they were going to sail somewhere and be gone for a long time but it must be close that but little boat anyway, probably, probably going to sail soon. out to a big boat no maybe i suppose that's There's also possible some wisdom to that. do you want to hop back up in here or do you want to swim the rest of the way back i can get back up okay i'll give her a hand i'll get back up so there's a boat sticking out my head i think Great. they might have seen us Oh. Uh, well, I good. definitely got hit. Okay. Oh. Well, I I'll do a little um, healy wordy at least for Prion. Um, yank the bolt out and seal the wound. Um, for you. Um, have six points of healing. <laughs> Thank you, um, and uh, you know, I'll throw one in for Saran as well. Um, Sarayan gets seven points of healing uh, with a Thanks. little bit of a whistle into the air and uh, not that it's necessary but a little gentle touch for each of you um, if they got a look at us there can't be that many tritons in town we they're probably going to know where to go we should get back to the ship as quickly as we can oh yeah let's go and row on back takes you just about 10 minutes to get all the way back your crew is there to hoist the jolly boat back up and 
throw out a rope ladder for all of you to climb back aboard. Do you think that we need to A, get the fuck out of here, B, just keep Priyan and Serain on the DL, or C, other? Well, leaving would solve a lot of problems, but we wouldn't get any answers. It would, it would also look really suspicious if we did that. Oh, that is very true. And the whole reason why we did this was to get more time to investigate. I just... It's easy to think that the worst of people, but I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, well why, don't, why don't we um, grab a couple of bottles and head down into, into town and go to one of the, the the places that serve alcohol. It's a bar, Melvin. Oh yeah, that. Um, also a tavern or a saloon. Start to worry about you, Melvin. Flop house. Got a bit of a taste oh. for the old liquor. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking it would be an excuse for us if they come around asking where we were just now. That's really smart could have you guys make a scene and maybe even like drop some hints that they were wreaking havoc somewhere else earlier in the night and by wreaking havoc I mean just being ridiculous when you just lean into it Saran don't worry <laughs> people keep telling me to be myself so I'll, I'll, I'll do that that'll draw attention good so we should Maybe set a watch for Kaylin. Make sure that she is taken or doesn't leave. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go into town to await the inevitable confrontation. We do need to sleep tonight. Yeah. But you're the captain. Do what you say. Are we going into town or are we staying? I'm willing to put it to the group. I wasn't over there. But you know everything we know. Well, how about just to be safe, we go hang out for a couple hours, make a scene, and people can see us, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, we'll just... Then we can go to bed. I don't know. And I, Nene, you like the girl. Do you want to go hang out with her? with me we've got a whole crew we could tell her that tell them that she's not allowed to leave and she's not allowed to leave well that works too hey crew <laughs> a couple of them just uh, perk up from their watches and look stand at attention keep an keep an eye on uh the chica downstairs okay hey Lynn. what about talise Is she coming Elise could keep an eye on her Good idea. Well, I've already told her to stay out of sight, so oh, she should stay downstairs. I mean, if girls doesn't want to be found, she's not going to be found. Yeah, she's not going to at least not going to put herself in a you know position where she's going to be found. I know that look. All right, into town then. All right, you know of the two main taverns that you have to choose from. Mm -hmm. Well, um, three actually. The the line one. Snapping nice line. Snapping line. I I was gonna recommend the the one that has the the dunk tank. <laughs> the dunk tank. More more likely that people won't realize that we've not been there for very long. That's actually a very good point. Melvin Melvin has a good point. <laughs> Let's go, guys. So to the so to the empty net in that yes, case? That's the, the one, yes. boyo. Yeah, there we go. Thank that's you. the one. <laughs> there we go. The empty net is the, uh, well, I guess hive of scum and villainy, if ever there was one in Salt Marsh. Um, <laughs> is it oh, a wretched hive of scum and villainy? If you ever needed to find someone to do anything at all, this would be the place to do it. And uh, the special drink here, they simply... 
call just taking a pull of the barrel and it, their pull of the grog and you are given a mug and there are these open vats just sitting there full of some type of alcoholic something and you just put a, put two coppers on the uh, counter and just dump your old flagon in and that is the main drink it is uh caused many a piece of broken furniture many a fist fight and maybe a few murders along the way as well but uh it is a tavern that whose reputation could not be seedier so you make your way in smell of sort of stale old onions um the um, aroma of alcoholic breath of sweat of the sea and brine all mingled together here the fire in the corner mm. can't quite drown out these aromas with with its um sort of sweet smoke and out the back, you can hear the customary sound of the drunkest patrons sort of hurling their drink over the railing into um, into the water as this entire inn is, in fact, set upon stilts that kind of sits on top of the salt marsh bay. There's a dock or a, um, excuse me, a balcony overlooking the back. Um, customary place to uh, expel the excess drink or sing a song or two or do both at the same time. So... In you go, no attention paid your way. I learned how to swear in this bar. Or actually, I learned how to swear under it. Hmm. Quite a, quite a swath of, you know, linguistic options available here. Uh, Melvin goes up to the, the bar and puts down four copper. Yeah. Dunks a flag in, downs it, and dunks again immediately. <laughs> again, you're um you're sort of met with a look of surprise and then the uh, barman sort of recognizes it and says uh, it's you again hi again that trickster or that iron liver kid one of the two i've i've been sitting in the corner for a while but i figured i should you know come get a drink finally <laughs> make a deception check melvin sure um, may Nether help with this? How would Nether help with that particular? Nether would help by putting a gold piece on the bar and sliding it over to the bartender and saying, in fact, there's a lot of us that have been here all night, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Right. Uh, that corner. Didn't drink much, pissed me the fuck off a bit, but at least you're drinking now. He takes the gold piece. And Better late than it. never. What? Just out of curiosity, what would you have rolled? Uh, I rolled a one and a fifteen, so it would have been a fourteen <laughs> with advantage. Oh, fourteen with advantage. <laughs> okay. He seems to. Uh, he seems to take that and. Seems sufficient um, for him. I I will also go over and purchase my own uh, opportunity to partake of the barrel. And yep. um <laughs> sounds I'm sorry, this is the <laughs> worst idea ever. <laughs> it's very uh, I hope this has never actually existed anywhere because oh my god. <laughs> I'm actually um, getting getting sick just thinking about it. Um, I kind of, I'm going to start kind of making my way through the crowds of people and find like different little um, <laughs> like half drunken groups of people and kind of just like hang out with them for a little bit and then like mention like oh did you see that really weird shit that um, the um, that Triton did over by some location that is nowhere near the Chandlers. <laughs> okay. And basically starts spreading rumors that like Saran was sort of gallivanting around on the opposite side of town, like being silly and investigating things that she's unfamiliar with. Gotcha. Oh, I want to know more about these anecdotes. I want a specific <laughs> one because that sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you come up with one, but in the meantime, before you sabotage. do that, um, please uh, make a, we'll call this one a um, performance check. Sure. Let's go for it. 
Um, the crack and die. The crack and die is a lot. Uh, I can math. 23. 23. Um, so yeah, that's extraordinary role. So not only do a few of the patrons believe you, um, and say, but a minute later you hear one of them sort of going up to flirt with one of the barmaids and says, I saw the funniest thing today. <laughs> saw that Triton girl out and she was, she was, uh, writing. Isn't that funny? <laughs> The Triton was writing. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to repeat the story as if he was the one who saw it to, yeah, to yeah. make his friends laugh and such. So you have spread the seed of the rumor of Saran being sort of out by the wicker goat, way out yeah. by the city gates, uh, far away from where your um, capers were taking place. I'm also going to go get a drink and set up an arm wrestling competition. Okay. Um, act like they've been going all night. Sure. Um, yeah. Are you going to be uh, participating in them yourself? Yeah. Okay. Breon, any uh, any gold you're putting down? Yeah, I put a gold piece down. All right. Um, well, for the first one. You will see one of your old crewmates well, from time from uh, from one time come by. A dragonborn bearing um, wearing uh, scale mail armor. No weapons on him at the moment, but uh, this dragonborn was part of the crew that was given to you by Scarin Wave Chaser. Um, and he comes up to him, right. I'd like a crack at you. All right, let's have a go then. Right. And he thumps down a, a scaly elbow on the table, and his clawed hand stands open, ready to challenge you to an arm wrestle. I sit down and do the same. Okay. You clasp hands. And um, the patrons around you begin thump, 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 thumping their flagons against the table. And then one of them kind of comes up as uh, almost like they're the official of it all. And then just slaps his hand onto the table and you strain against each other's muscles. Um, muscles. Prion, please make an uh, a straight strength check. As an athletics. DM. Yeah. While this is happening and there's distractions, I would like Nether to be keeping a very weather eye out for pickpockets. Um, gotcha. Okay. Uh, Nether, please make a perception check while uh, we are rolling. Is this with, I always forget, my, my, my senses or the sprite senses? Uh, you gain benefits from your sprite. So... Oh. Let's see. Okay. It is a strength check, Brian, as this is not a um, combined okay. feat of athletics. It is just completely too bad. your muscular strength. 15. Right. I have uh, I have rolled a 22. Oh, Jesus Christ. The dragonborn <laughs> takes you a third of the way down to the table. Roll another strength check. Come on, Prion, show him the meaning of Pixie's Fury! <laughs> if you don't Seven, beat him, I'll show you how to do it. 17 this time? Let's get better. 17, you go back up to the noon position. Roll again. <laughs> 16. 16. Oh, you push him just a little further. He's now a third of the way back down. One more. Oh, come on. Is this do four, it. I believe? Do it! Oh, 19 total. 19. Oh, he's got a 17, but that's not enough. And you get all the get him all the way back down. You feel you have the leverage on him now. Please make a strength check with advantage. 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 I better roll shit now. Oh, no. I rolled an 8 and an 18 to 21. <laughs> I rolled a disadvantage. I had a Kraken and I had a 9. And so his scaly... <laughs> 
wrist thumps on the table. Damn it. Strong arms there. Sea child. And yourself. Thanks again. Does he uh, give me his and one gold piece? He stands up, sort of massaging his shoulder. What did, you, what did you say? Does he give me his one gold piece? Yeah, yeah. He hands over a gold piece. And um, Writing that down. Sort of a, an, another um, challenger comes forward. Um, another pair of challengers. It's okay. customary to let the winner and the loser rest at least just a, a couple rounds. So, mm-hmm. But now you've gotten the... Um, the those interested in the feats of strength interested and an arm wrestling competition sort of organically arises from this nether i don't remember what i heard from your perception check. uh i for some reason it came up as an initiative role but i rolled a 17 and plus the um sprites perception that's a plus three so dirty 20 dirty 20 okay um you see a a bit of pickpocketing taking place from what you can tell you're being given your companions at least are being given a pretty wide berth good we probably have the most money of anybody in this place and it just occurred to me that we might be ripe for the picking but if if I'm not going to stop any pickpocketing I see I'm just going to make sure that none of it's happening against us yeah got it okay yeah none you don't see anything happening so you've spent a it's probably been about an hour now you've been in the tavern um you have an understanding with the bartender you have spun a tale of Serayan doing nonsense elsewhere by the way that happened i don't know if you heard yes. <laughs> i told Mariah, lots of stories uh, about you doing fun things on the opposite side of town of course it is like investigating things that you don't know about. Well, what if somebody <laughs> asks me about them? What do I say? I'll tell you all about it. It'll be fine. Oh, okay. Can I get a drink, Melvin? Melvin. <laughs> uh, what do you want? Don't they just have the one drink here? Oh, that's their specialty. I think they got other stuff. Well, they've, money they've, is... they've got three drinks: small, medium, and large. Great. <laughs> except money the, is... except the large is just three smalls. Perfect. Money is now an object. So what is the uh, most cost-effective drink? I don't have money. Like, all the money I have. Large and drink it as quickly as possible. Could I get a large and I'll drink it as quickly as possible? Okay. Thank you. I'll go you. over and I'll, I'll buy a drink with my own money. Gulp. Gulp. <laughs> Uh, Sarayan, it is spirit. it burns it is vile it is weirdly bitter and sour but immediately upon it hitting your stomach you start to feel your head spin a bit it starts to get the job done it's like in bioshock when you drink too many things too fast <laughs> yeah starts to go like Brr. awful <laughs> all right i think maybe enough i think so I have to throw hey, it, turn it, your the mic worst in bit. Red Dead actually made me nauseous <laughs> when the when the screen starts <laughs> I can't going that. all around this in Red Dead Redemption. I was like, I so have nauseous. to, I, I might have to skip this. This is awful. <laughs> and then some guy in the bar goes, Lenny. <laughs> anyway, moving along. Um, anything else that you guys would like to do here at the empty net? Can you before? turn your mic up a little bit, Peter? It's. I have been cranking it all night. Yes, I will do so. I I will only note that it might take some difficulty. Uh, it, it, it might it might be difficult for my uh, compatriots to get me to leave. But I. Okay. Yeah. Mariah, um. it's time to go. No, <laughs> Melvin, party all night long. Count it. Um, <laughs> Ma- Mariah, we pull. we should we should get going. You've been drinking a lot oh, today. The year- 1778. I, 1776. I, I, I don't think she ate anything today. Uh, well, uh, Mariah, the, the, you do have alcohol back in your in your bunk if you really need more. I'm not sure about that, Melvin. 
The rat kebabs are good here. They are, but <laughs> I'm not in the mood. I was thinking for Mariah. That sounds gross. I think I have cheese somewhere on the ship. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Cheese. Having um, made the scene. Yeah. Go ahead. As, as we're walking back, I, I want to ask Seren, um, what happened to your your money? I thought money was no object. I learned the reality that I think most people face where money became an object. Uh, because I had to buy new armor and I realized that I can't do what I've always done, which is to just kind of say like, oh, when I'm under the sea, I, I'm, I'm royalty. So people just give me stuff. Oh, and that's, that's why money's no object just because it literally here. isn't an object because you don't use it. That makes sense. No, okay. and we have coffers full of it, but we never need to use it. It's funny how that works. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but now I only have like 20 gold pieces. Frantic scribbling in notebook. <laughs> have you been poor before? Um, well, like my family's relatively well off, but they don't really give me much. I have an allowance or had an allowance while I was living with them. Have you ever had to live on 20 gold pieces? It's uh, like yeah. loads of money. <laughs> Can it be done? <laughs> Most people live on less than that. Most people live on less than that? <laughs> yeah, I, I know people who live on, like, a silver for a, silver. a week. Yeah. For a week? Oh, no. No wonder everyone's so mad all the time up here. <laughs> True. True. Oh boy. Well, uh, poor Saran. <laughs> Literally, poor Saran. Um, yeah, it's tough for her out here. They, uh, you all can make your way back to Pixie's Fury, and um, you are not confronted by anyone throughout the night. Um, having you feel like you have sewn a tall tale. And, uh, yeah, the crew is waiting for you. And Talise is down there with Kaylin, who has been undisturbed. All right. So should we talk about what we're going to do tomorrow? We know that there's a woman who's getting ready to leave with her daughter to go to the chateau. We know that there's some something, some sort of sacrifice involved. Where it becomes difficult to understand is why the pattern wasn't maintained. Was it because they suddenly realized it was a bad thing or this particular group of Chandlers didn't want to be involved in it and are trying to escape it? I thought it was where they fell out, or, had an argument. Well, maybe it was because the argument was because they didn't want to be given their children to the sea anymore. I completely uh, understand with that. You mean prime water, prime water and prime Chandler water and the Chandlers had, an had, a, had, a, had a falling out. And if they're part of this cult together or part of this arrangement, then then it's possible that the fact that they didn't want to do it anymore meant that they had to that there's a falling out. I mean, it'd be simple to just go in and say, you can't do this anymore, we're taking the baby. But we don't have all the information. Uh, DM, how old is Kaylin? Approximately? She's probably about 20 years old. Which checks out. And when was that, that last one? When was it supposed to be? How long ago did it not happen? Was it twenty? So it was meant to be eight. Uh, it was or meant to be 20. eighteen years ago that yeah. the sacrifice was meant to be made. Yeah. Wait, eighteen years. N no. Was it not two years ago? Two, two years, years ago. ago oh, sorry. Yeah, two. Sorry, when two the person years. was eighteen, she should have died yeah. at eighteen, but she didn't. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, sorry. She I, was the sacrifice. I got completely right. fuzzled. But she did. They didn't send her. So that that's where we're that's where we're confused. Is why didn't they send her? Is it because? And that's why we decided, determined that we wanted we wanted more time because if they were bugging out this night, then we we wanted more time to investigate to find out. It's because we were wanted to get Saran's armor. That's why. And that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that too. Oh, good point. Because if we were like if we were going to leave to follow them to wherever there was they were going, then it meant that Saran wasn't going to have armor. So yeah. So we. Unmute yourself. Do we know how long ago that falling out happened? Um, the half orc in the graveyard told you that maybe ten or fifteen years ago. Um, once. Gellin Prime Waters' father died. Mm. The Prime Waters began construct constructing a tomb, their own family tomb, kind of on the opposite side of the graveyard. They'd usually been buried with the Chandler family. They the two families were very intermingled. Um, mm. They were almost two of the same line, really. Mm -hmm. And up until this point, in which there was a huge falling out. Um, around the time that as i said prime water's father died okay so back on the boat nether is going to sit quietly on a pile of rope and her look is going to go distant as doll is going to fly up back over to where the chandlers are and get an idea of what's happening there um just I wanted to point out, I'm looking back through my notes, we heard from Keledek that the Prime Waters lost a ship once every 25 years uh -huh. in addition, which matches the um, Chandler's sacrifice timeline exactly. So the Prime Waters would sacrifice a ship and the Gellerns would sacrifice a kid. kid. Or the kid was on the ship. Or the kid was on the ship. Uh, yeah. Or. It's possible that the, because the Chandlers had a member of the Prime Waters in their employ at the time of Prime Water Senior's death. Is that correct, DM? Uncle Talon? Or it was the guy me of that, that they heard. Right. And he got kicked out after Prime Water Senior, di Senior died? That's what I have yes. in my notes. Oh my god, yeah, you're Keledek. totally right. Yep. So when Prime Water Senior died, I wonder if the secret got out and the Chandlers figured it out. Mm. And got angry. Are do you think that the Chandlers didn't know that their kids were being sacrificed? Yeah, that's oh, a good call. That would be that's awkward. A, that's another another possibility. Especially because if the, the Prime Waters have more power than the Chandlers, socially speaking. Um, that, yeah, that, mm, okay, interesting. It's a, it's a possibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. what does Doll see? Doll will see um, a crew beginning to pull out the uh chandler boat from beneath the waves it takes a crew of about four they're hauling it up very slowly um it seems there are some diving in the water at the same time trying to recover some of the goods that had been just loaded in um into the boat for traveling that is what's going on on the outside there are uh, more people awake now you hear a crying child really almost a crying baby on the inside. Um, hmm. and Doll will get closer and see if he can overhear anything. Okay. Um, flying nearer to the house, the there is some conversation 
sort of almost heated conversation happening on the interior. Dahl will see one Talon Chandler speaking to um, in the on the inside of the home to uh, uh, to, 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 excuse me, Gria, his wife. And, um, are you, is Dahl actually going to enter the home or just if stay outside an, and if listen? If there's in? an open window, if, if there's a, a vantage point from outside that he could hear, then yes. But if not, then he'll try and go in. Well, please make a stealth check. There is a way in. All right. At advantage, obviously. Yes. So that's going to be a 15 plus 8. So a 23. Okay. Next to a um, large, well-built hearth. Wide stones um, set, stacked. Minimal masonry. Um, almost like a stack of stones creating the hearth in the side of the room. There's a fire burning. A strange smell that Dahl experiences, kind of strong on the inside of this home. Unfamiliar, um, fishy, but also herbal, just kind of permeating in here. Very odd. Um, Worst <clears> bath <throat> and body works ever. So, uh, Dahl is able to perch on a high-backed chair. Gria is sitting in a chair opposite, and Talon is pacing back and forth in front of the fire. And you hear him say, no, at least must go. It must continue. The child must go. And and she will object. Say, what about uh, the attack? What what do you make of it? It doesn't matter. The cycle must continue. It will happen. She will become as all of us. She must go away. And uh, Gria seems to reticently agree. Right, well, she can have some of my clothes then. I'll need to pack her a new bag. Hers are waterlogged. That's fine. I've sent out a, a group to gather a new ship, or gr gather a new boat from the dry dock. It should be ready. In a few hours. Hopefully we can leave at dawn. And go. Pack her things. Quiet the child. We won't want her screaming on the way out. Hopefully we can get before the fog has dissipated too much. So as this is happening, Nether is speaking the words that she hears aloud to the group. Okay. So all of you hear this. Well, oh, so much for delaying them. I, it's just a few hours. Just speak to him. To town? I tried. Or, or maybe to the, to the wife. By your someone. description, she seems more reluctant. She mentioned about becoming one of us. Maybe point, they're cursed? Point of clarification. The girl who's being sent, I know, is the cousin of the one that's in our hold. Yeah. Whose parents are whose? Is anyone related to Talon and his wife? So Talon, Talon and Greya, they're, they're, they're Kaylin's parents. They are Kaylin's parents. Yes. Got it. Thank you. And Talon's the one that was involved in the falling out between the Prime Waters right. and the Chandlers. Yes. All right. Um, Dahl is going to look around for the mother of the baby. Okay. Um, make uh i guess doll would have time to flit about but make another stealth check 
to move about the rooms. So that's going to be a 13 plus 8. 13 plus 8 is math. 21. 21. Good. Feeling completely unseen, Doll does make it into one of the um, bedrooms. I believe it's the same one that Kalen led you to. Mm -hmm. uh, you do see a young woman quieting what looks must be actually probably as an infant um and while uh while she's doing that um gria chandler comes in and speaks to who you now learn to be elsie um saying that she's going to bring her some clothes but they must go still tonight and uh, Elsie says, I, I understand is, uh, is, is Gareth, is Gareth going to be there at the, and, and um, Gria says, yes. You Inside will get to check. see him, though it is not yet his time to come home. When? It's been not yet his time. I understand. And the baby begins to cry again. And both Elsie and Gria look at it with an expression more of annoyance than concern or care. But she still rocks it softly until it quiets down. So not with familial love? Not particularly. Hmm. Well, that's telling. <sighs> All right. Unless and then anybody else in has any almost idea. eerie, uncomfortable silence, they go about repacking their bags, not speaking much to each other at all. So unless anybody has any, anything else that Doll should look at, I'm going to bring him back. Um, that's probably fine. Um, yeah. Um, well, DM, does the name the Chateau mean anything to me? Uh, make a history check. Okay. I'm going to use my inspiration on that. Okay. Oh, that's much better. Uh, I've rolled a Kraken <laughs> Ooh. for a total of 27. The first roll was a 1. <laughs> uh, 27. You list off a number of Chateaus in your head. Most of them are, it's a strange term. Usually it refers to something more inland. <laughs> um, <laughs> and an island chateau that owned by a single family, you think of a few, but they have names and they're not associated with a merchant family from Saltmarsh. You have no idea. is not in your extensive um uh art uh shoot architectural knowledge there we go <laughs> all right so from this conversation i think it's clear that the chateau is actually a place there was some question before as to whether or not the chateau was made up and they would just mm. go out and kill people it seems that there is in fact a place that they do go to so that would certainly be a place we could we could try and follow them to go and get answers. Um, Except if they're leaving at dawn because we might not be ready. Right. Um, Debris, um, do you remember any of the names from the graveyard? The dead Chandlers? Yes. Was there the name Gareth among them? 
No. Yes? I believe Thought so. so. Yeah. What if the... Is, the... is there one? Was there Gareth there? I believe so. Nope. No? There's, there's not. That's what I thought. <laughs> well, but you had Flata, Ziha, Herman, Yuri, and Brendan. See, you could easily have got Gareth out of any of them. <laughs> no, no. Well, I'm I'm gonna say my my theory, even if it doesn't quite fit now. But what if the dead children aren't actually dead, and that they're at this chateau place, and the chateau place is like a I don't know, some place that you have to like go to get oct an octopus stuck on your face and like worship an obelisk or something. I mean, that's I'm getting a very secret island of cultist vibe. Secret island. Secret island. Don't let the <laughs> island get you down. Saka. Um, so what's the plan then? Do we well, rest and try follow and follow them? them? The issue of Saran's armor situation remains. I don't think we want to put ourselves in a combat situation without one of our frontliners being able to frontline. I I would prefer to be armored. Is there a, does anybody have a way that we could... I mean, Doll could stow away. Um, I'd be without him for... However oh, long the however trip it is. Long. What what if we convinced them to let us take them wherever they're going? What they lose their boat and then all of a sudden we just show up like, hey, we got a boat. And also I what think if that's Prion pretty much tipped our hand as far as what well, we do. What what if we have um I'm sorry, I'm forgetting Could... his name. The other councilman that is not Prime Water that Saran Anders. likes. Solmorn, thank you. Yeah. Uh, if we can get Solmorn to explain that there have been recent attacks encroaching on Salt Marsh's harbor, then we'd have a reason to escort, at least. I, I don't think they want anyone involved. And that aside, I'm kind of keen to involve the least number of people in this issue until we have a much better sense of what the playing field looks like. I, I like Anders. There's some shit that's adjacent to him that's kind of making my alarm bells go off. Um, so okay. I do wonder at the very least, could either Dahl and, or maybe um, Prion, you've got a bird, right? You've got a bird friend. Maybe Hi. one of them could at least go um, have a peek at what direction they're heading. So at least at least we would have a heading if we did want to attempt to look for them. Hi. On top of that as well, you got to remember for what Nether said, that they wanted to leave while the mist was still here. They don't want to be seen leaving. I think whatever okay. they're doing is all hush hush. So we'll just follow them then. Doll can go and actually well, hang on to the side of the boat unseen. Okay. I'll just right. be back to the way things were for a day or two. You've got us. You're gonna be okay. I'm gonna wrap my arm <laughs> haphazardly over her shoulder. <laughs> that's weird. Don't do that. that oh, doesn't, sorry. That's not that. that. Hugs are strange. Whatever. I um, take the hug. Yo, come here. And I'm just gonna like sort of flop over Saran. It's like not so much a hug as a glomp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Mariah smell heavy of alcohol. It it's is a, a strong scent. <laughs> Brisk. <laughs> Brisk. <laughs> yes. So is that Wait, is so that what... a is that a plan then, DM? Can we do that? Have, have Doll latch on. Yeah. To the to their boat, yeah. 
Doll has both a fly speed and a swim speed. Okay. And is invisible. All right. So Doll can go over there. Is Doll tiny? Doll is probably one inch tiny. Okay. Doll can easily then invisibly tuck herself somewhere along that boat. You will see that the new one has been brought out. It'll be an hour or two before it's probably ready and fully loaded to bring up, but they're making progress as the night goes on. It is still middle of the night. The guards there are beginning to yawn against um, against their weariness as you all wait to... So all we did probably was about a, a, point. a bunch of... We made a lot of work for a bunch of guys. Go back and see yeah. it. It probably gets to about 5, maybe 4, 4 a.m. Really before the sun is rising that the Chandlers themselves begin to gather on the docks and start to... Looks like the young um, woman with the baby is about ready to board and go. Be careful, doll. And Nether right. will try and sleep. They cast off and row silently into the cold mists of the evening, or the early morning. And she reports once they're just out of port, they take the step-up sail, the small sail, square-rigged, and furl it, and then catch the wind and continue to sail out, straight out to sea. All right, I'm going to take my long rest if I can get it. Okay, so you all are just going to listen to Dahl's report of what's going on? Um, I've probably passed out hours before this happens. Okay, all right. You all can, um, you all can uh, take your rests. Are you taking a long rest? Everyone just sleeping, trying to get a full mm -hmm. rest through the night? Yep. Okay. You can do so, and um, without uh, without interruption. And as you are taking those, just in the earliest part of the morning, you hear a mental ping. Nether. It's... There's something... There's something ahead of us. Close my eyes and open them up again, and I can see what Doll is seeing. There's, there's a island, and you see a less an island and more just dark rocks jutting up from the waves, like a like a skirt around some of them clings old seaweed dotted with barnacles. There's a rocky beach to one side and a small lagoon in the middle. The Chandler boat is heading straight towards it. Is there a chateau? Nothing of the sort. What is the general mood of various people on the boat there has been almost no speaking the entire way besides short exchanges likely just navigation they begin to walk they land the boat on this beach and get out and start to walk up a slight incline to um, where there is a lagoon in front of them and then a high rock face. They bow their heads, begin muttering something under their breath. What um, did they mutter? Wisest deepest most profound wisest deepest most profound your promised is here wisest deepest most profound 
wisest, deepest, most profound. The promised is here. And the lagoon begins to sort of shift. Bubbles begin to boop, 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 come to the surface. And about a dozen scaly fish-like creatures, their heads begin to come up from the water. They come forming a line like a chorus of fish-eyed um, creatures just staring. And then high up on the rock, a what seems to be a robed man with an octopus wrapped around his head um, comes up and says chosen family bring forth your tribute and the woman walks forward with her child towards the lagoon the fishy people sort of part making a narrow column between all of them all muttering some of them it seems in common maybe some in abyssal and this woman simply walks into the lagoon till she's waiting till it reaches up to her neck and she and her child disappear beneath the salty water the, all of the fishy people turn around begin walking back into the lagoon If Dahl wanted to make that boat incapable of sailing, what could he do? Dahl is a tiny creature. Correct. But is there any abilities I can cast that would a spell through him? Do you have to be in a certain range to do so? It's a good question. I believe uh, casting I, I th through your familiar, you have to be have within to be maybe within 60 range. feet or 30 feet. Yeah, uh, the um, the uh, evocation I have does not say anything about it, so it's it must be the default. Yeah. Um, any knots that could be untied, uh, a uh, the um, sail that could be slashed. Perhaps. Um, hmm. Have Dahl make a uh, uh, three sleight of hand checks. Three sleight of hand checks. All right, I'm going to use um, my inspiration on the first one. Oh, I have t I have double krakens. <laughs> can I can I get two two successes? <laughs> That's a one success yeah, right one there. Success. All right. Really successful, Damn. though. Two successes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's going to be a... So plus four, that's going to be a ten. Um, and then... Another ten. Okay. You are able to... Um, Doll is able to silently run her dagger and create a huge gash in the sail um it's tough to cut through all of it but she's able to or he's able to and then you also can um untie one of the the lines sort of catching the sail to the boat itself um the mast then eh, kind of begins to list one way and <laughs> leans against the side of the boat um permanent damage likely not but Delay, certainly. All right. And then I close my fists and Dahl reappears right in front of me. Okay. So having d uh, Nether describes to you now the scene, the ritual that has just taken place, the woman and her child walking straight down into the sea amongst chanting of these fish-like people and the Chandler family members themselves. And that is where we will take a break and figure yeah. out what to do next. The sacrifice having been made. Fishy, fishy. 
fishy fishy man so that's uh that's super uplifting hello everyone thanks for uh hanging out with us for summoning a hype train for that <laughs> you guys are the best uh thank you for hanging out um Didn't save the baby we are going to take a short break at least we and, didn't kill his parents um that's true <laughs> <laughs> and then um be on uh and then once we get back we are going to give away uh a couple sets so we're going to give away a, what a 35 dollar gift card and it's then a 15 dollar 15 and 25 and 15 and 25 yeah 25 and 15 uh, the, some store credit to crack and dice so the hype train should have reset by now as well so if you do want to activate it again we can give away even more so Again, thank you very much, guys. Thanks to all your generosity. Um, yeah, two sets to give away when we're back. And uh, we'll see you in about 10 minutes. Please don't go anywhere. Zoom. See you in a bit. Earlier in the session, the party finished their sabotage of the boat of the Chandler family to give themselves a little more time to investigate. After spying on Talon and his wife, um, Gria, they determined that the... Um, looked like their niece and her young daughter were going to be taken to a mysterious location referred to as the chateau but it turned out as the group rested and prepared to depart the um the familiar spy witnessed a ritual in which beings were called forth from the ocean upon a small island a kraken priest came above on a rock um, and they presented their sacrifice as it was called as the young woman and her child walked right down the beach and into the ocean's depths and that is immediately where we resume the party have been having the party now receiving that information heather has just called back um doll to her and she takes a deep breath and she says, We shall be to quarters! And uh, another um, one of the sailors on watch says, Quarters! Quarters! And runs to the bell, the ship's bell, and kung, 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 rings out throughout the um, late morning. Um, the crew is suddenly up in a flurry. Prepare to make sail! I, like, bang the door open from the captain's quarters. What? What are leaving? Ow! What? We're leaving. They're sacrificing a baby. Ah, oh, shit. Fuck. Okay. Yep. As you were. Melvin falls out of his bunk. <laughs> You see cool. a um a a hand reach down to help you up. Oh, thank um, you. I'll and take the hand. Helping you and then helping you gather your things as well. You see the familiar face of um young Kaylin, who you've just uh um recruited on board. She's taking down her her own bunk and slinging it against the side of the uh um bulkhead to keep it out of the way for anything that might happen and she says anytime just watch your feet getting out of these they're tough and you can see her tie up expertly a few knots and ties her things away yeah i'm not used to them yet um, we're really gonna sail yeah unfortunately <laughs> nether's gonna do all the first mate things she needs to do in order to get the boat ready what are we all doing right, with serene's so armor are we gonna go get it or what I, how long I... How long do I think it'll take before the ship can set sail? Um, probably in fifteen minutes. If you have the crew fifteen is all minutes beat to action, so of course you uh, can always swim and catch up to the boat. I'll go okay. get it. Definitely can. <laughs> it's fast. <laughs> Should I come with you? If, if you wish. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go. I'll go with uh, with Priyan. I will run. 
Okay. Green stumbles so you guys after start you. Sprinting down the street. I wouldn't have my armor on at this time. The, I'll be the, the bed. <laughs> Gotcha. The dwarven armory is open now, and they're just kind of milling about, tending to some, uh, selling some whaling hooks to fisher, fishermen, etc. Um, as you come up on it, they kind of look at you startled. Um, Morning. You run up to the front of their smithy. How's the armor? Need my armor, please? It could probably use just a little bit of adjustment. The time. ornamentations on the shoulder no, just no. didn't. No time. Oh, you don't want it. You want to fix it? Yeah, I'll come back. Um, I just need it now. Please. Am I doing this okay. right? Okay. Uh, made is, is it wearable now? That's the main question. Uh, I, we did the adjustments. It's just this. It doesn't look quite the way that she wanted. Uh, we can come back and have that bit done afterwards. Is that right? Is that okay? Uh, uh, sure. Okay, Thank great. You. Thanks. You paid for it, though. Okay, all right. Take it. Fine. All right. <laughs> And a large set of full plate armor is given to you, um, containing a few sacks. All right, we run Drop. back. Wait a minute. <laughs> so you book it back to the ship. Um, they are just about ready. You now see you have a three-masted ship here, all of which have a couple of square sails on them. And it's the sh entire ship is alive with motion. You see people climbing up the shrouds, which are the nets between that kind of hang off the sides of the masts. And on every single spar, the different wood parts that hold up the sails, there are people crawling along, working on the ties that hold up the sails, some unfurling the sails. Every part of the ship has a sailor crawling about, tying knots, tightening ropes, securing lines, and the ship is quickly coming to life as a whole organism ready to stride across the sea. I've I've come up with my hat pulled very, very low over my face and kind of like sitting in front of the wheel, the, the wheel just- Captain's on deck! Uh, I was, was going to say, Mariah! <laughs> Morning. You suck. I. <laughs> Do you think we should tell the crew why we're sailing so fast so that maybe that'll make them because go faster? Tell them we're going to go plunder an island. I think maybe we should just tell them that about... we're going to go try to save a baby. Maybe they don't care about babies. I think they're fine as long as they know they're getting paid. So, you know, there's that. If you want to, if you want to, you know, light a fire under their asses by saying that they're getting paid and there's a baby whose life there's on the line, you know, that that might get some people to go. Um, or, all right. Well, if you don't Yell at them about babies! <laughs> I'm gonna go put my armor on. Are you okay, Mariah? My head hurts. Oh, that's because okay. you're a drunkard. Well, fuck you too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you up for this? Do you need to rest? Would you like to go lay down, Captain? Maybe I'm you should stay on, stay on the shore. Are you sure? Are you fucking kidding me? Would you like some coffee? Um, that I'll I, take. I, I could, I could step in as Captain. You want hat? Yes! <laughs> Serene grabs the hat. So Fine. who's going to put your armor on? Do you oh. know how to put it on? Oh no. No, wait, fuck, the sun's hot. Give me the hat back. Um, <laughs> hell. It's <laughs> just sticks out all of her. <laughs> Sraean, you're uh unfortunately your um oh yeah, your the the hat does not fit well over your crown. So yank it back. Shading <laughs> my eyes. You've muted yourself, just so you know. You've muted yourself. Liz, Liz, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, without any... Uh, you've pulled your, you pulled your mic out again, haven't it's you? You got excited. Time. I saw you get excited. <laughs> you pulled that mic out. She did. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, yeah, Saray, and I, I think she's standing here like, put my armor on, please. Uh, and 
I show you where it goes. There we go. There we go. There you go. It took a while. For it to, once you plug it back in, it takes a while to kick in. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. So some of the dwarven sailors more accustomed with this armor will come and help sort of secure the armor to you, strapping you in, and you suddenly feel yourself encased in this artificial shell now of steel. But it fits. You feel like you can move yes. pretty f mostly freely. Not quietly, but freely at least. <laughs> like a hermit and crab. The, uh, the crew now um, has all of the sails ready. There are crewmen... Uh, there are sailors at every position on all of all three of the masts and at the um, and and at every position ready. And then you hear uh, the, the voices call, "Ready, ready, make way!" All right, cast off. Cast, cast off! off! <laughs> I cast it off, and you hear they uh, throw the ropes back to the docks, and then um, the ship slowly starts to make its way out into the open sea all three um every ma excuse me every sheet on all three masts is uh unfurled and this pixie's fury begins to tear across the sea she's fast as fuck boys boom boom motherfucker and uh i tell them where to go make your course nor by northwest yeah. Mel I'll, I'll Melvin follow, shows up with all the um, the charts. Yeah, and starts with, fumbling uh, with them, trying Melvin to find the right one. Or we'll we'll make a we'll make a heading. Hi, that's a rock. One of the sailors mentions. Typically, avoid that spot. That can be a real nasty rock in the fog, hard to see. They're sacrificing rising. babies there. What? We're saving babies, y'all. For the kids! For the children! <laughs> Think of the children! <clears throat> Mariah, mother of orphans! <laughs> they kind of cry out, Yes, Mariah will save the children! And they all start, uh, oh, you know, no. <laughs> sailing. <laughs> off. Now that's how a legend gets started. <laughs> That's her new name that everyone will refer to her that from now on. Oh, uh, Melvin is frantically writing in his notebook. <laughs> Every orphan's mother. <laughs> yep. Wait, does that mean she's my mother? Mommy! Oh no. <laughs> Please, I have enough mommy issues of my own. <laughs> Mariah's the other half. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, half Drow, half Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's over. That explains the attitude a bit too. <laughs> um. So the 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 ship is just flying across the waters. It's in, the speed is impressive. The sailors are um, at their the peak of their ability. It still takes about hour and a half to two hours before you see um, rocks looming ahead. And just on the shore of this rocky outcropping is indeed you see a boat with a couple figures trying to right a mast while a number of others sit on the shoreline with a long sheet spread out. It seems they are trying to sew a large sail back together and are just holding it up inspecting the gash that was cut into it to see if it will now hold wind. Destroy that boat! Shall we load the ballista? Yeah, why not? How far away are we? Um, You're probably close to a, more like a quarter mile-ish, but oh, probably okay. getting close to, you know, getting closing quickly to closer to a thousand feet, so... What is the range on your ballista? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, cool. That's in our journal? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Uh, Pixie's Beard. Fire ballista range uh, 120 for uh, regular, and then uh, long ranges, or the, the bigger range is uh, 480. 
Okay. So getting closer, you um you can kind of uh ready it. Are any of you firing it or are you just ordering the crew to do so? Do we have a gunner? What skill is it? It's a range attack. Yeah. It has its, its own it has stat its own block. thing, so yeah. oh. I guess we can just ha let someone else do it. Mm. Maybe we should have Dragon do it. Yeah. Yes. Dragon! Dragon! Did somebody say Dargon? <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Depending on how well this goes, he could be... He's in the hes in the, um, the running to become our chief gunner. <laughs> right. Always like the sound of gunnery sergeant. Right. Oh, okay. And he goes up and he starts to... Um, a, uh, to um, man the ballista. He brings two other dwarves, takes three actions, one to load, to move, and then to aim. And he's the one who is aiming. Um, someone likes to roll the attack as you close to about 500 and a little less. Um, it will be at disadvantage at the long range, but still, you're welcome to bombard this target. Give it a Chael? go. All right, Chael, do you want to do it? I will do it. Uh, what do I need to roll? Do it. <clears throat> roll 2d20s. 2d20s. 1, 2. And I think that is a uh oh 20? Dirty 20? Well, uh, well no. it did unfortunately both together. you rolled a... a 1 and a 19. The attack was at disadvantage for a long range. So you rolled a natural 1. Uh, <laughs> in which... Well. Well, in fact, the um, the ballista isn't quite loaded correctly, and so the <laughs> the bolt goes out and just starts flipping end over end and goes about forty feet before it uh, just splashes into the water. Is that how it better work? Nope. It's a good try. Uh, I weren't loaded correctly, and you're quickly making a path directly towards the land. Now, um, the group seems. <laughs> Frantically trying to put together this boat, they're furl they're, um, I don't they're unfurling comment. the sail. It looks like they're just about ready to go on. A <laughs> bolt kills a dolphin. <laughs> oh no! On a long what? range. The <laughs> <laughs> like a coast guard are following us as well. Shit! Oh, <laughs> flipper. Um. Anyway, uh, can can I assist Harris, them are... in the loading process? Just like telling them how to load it incorrectly so it doesn't happen again. Yes, you may. Tell okay. how to load it incorrectly? <laughs> <laughs> to, to load it load in the, correctly. The oh, okay. Bolt into the ballista correctly. You can jump. Sure, so with Melvin yeah. assisting, you can do that. Um, and there will be one more attack. This one's a straight roll. Um, uh, uh, um, inspiration? Who's, who's, who's rolling it? Who's rolling it? It's up to you guys. I've already used my inspiration. I have as well. <laughs> I have it. Go for uh, it. Okay. <laughs> Roll a d20. Okay. La, 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 la. You're, gonna, ah. you're using your inspiration. Yeah. Roll two d20s. Oh, so the first one was a one. This oh, time, no. oh. and the next one was a twenty. Yeah. Boom! A natural twenty as um, Sarayan <laughs> um, steps forward in her glinting armor and points towards where the target is and says, "Fire!" And the ballista is let loose and fires. <laughs> now, Sarayan, <laughs> please roll six d10 damage. Ooh. Ooh. That's exciting. Da, 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 da. This has nothing to do with dinosaurs. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's the island. Yeah. It, was, it was a dolphin. One. You can two, roll. Okay. Oh, three. Right, <laughs> we're just going to do math. <laughs> wow. That's a good roll. <laughs> 20, a really good roll. Eight plus two is ten. Eight plus 18, two is ten. Twenty-seven, <laughs> thirty-five, forty, 
four points four. of damage. Trust Damn, Jay. Girl. He knows maths. <laughs> So, so, so do I. I just didn't get the chance to do it. <clears throat> and it, the, bol- the bolt actually just pierces through the hull and the entire ship that they have begins to sink. You see the figures on the shore begin to scatter towards the rocks to take cover. Bye. Well, we should shoot them too. Oh, did someone else want to try shooting? Well, I mean, actually, I think here's a... a- practical question that i as the player just don't really know like is there is there a way to like get the boat to a place where we can hit them or do we need to actually disembark they are now taking cover among the rocks okay so so yes they are okay yeah you will need to we're probably gonna have have a shore party yeah okay so then let's have the um, the rest of the crew kind of keep watch and um, keep the ballista and ready should any larger threats make themselves apparent. And the rest of us can go ashore and just kill these motherfuckers right in the face. Love it. I'm going to cast Mage Armor as I get into the boat. Sounds okay. like a solid plan. So you quickly load into your boat and start rowing. There's no sign of them as you come closer and closer. Um, um, You can hear a voice that calls out and says, You've made a mistake. Come in here. No, I think we're pretty intentional about it. Thanks. Um, I think he as we the place. get closer to the shore, um, I'm going to cast darkness again, um, on a shell and have doll go up ahead so that we're not actually in the darkness, but that they're between us and the, uh, the enemies, there is a globe of darkness obscuring us so that they're not going to be able to shoot at us. As we come up onto shore. Okay. But I'm going to have to hold on to someone while this is happening because I'm not going to be able to see. I got you. Right. Um, It will also be tough. Make a caster level check too because you are going to have to communicate with Dahl while getting information from someone else about how Dahl is supposed to position the darkness flying ahead of you. Because Mm. Dahl cannot see either yeah. right caster caster level so just a d20 plus my modifier yes Perm, 16 plus 4 dirty 20 okay um you are able to uh hang on to the spell and communicate until you one of your companions says all right we're about to beach and at which point your companions are also blinded but okay doll um, kind of yeah and then go ahead. doll puts the the um shell back underneath part of his seaweed clothing and it turns invisible the spell is serrayan shield wall i Hmm. stand at the front all right everyone please put your um your oh yeah tokens in this space here and we will bring up initiative Copyright. do you know what this is the first combat we've had in about three weeks yep four That's weeks true. it's exciting yeah all right oops oh oh pretty <laughs> so excited yeah. <laughs> i fall flat That's on my so face sad. Combat! Combat! <laughs> <laughs> right into the beach. Get stuck what in the fighter. sand. Yeah. A sink. Oh, shit. That armor of yours is rather thick. Five C's. And actually, you recognize... It's weird. The stream's the not here in the music. That are here. Is Oe Groshor my pixie? My uh, my sprite? Uh, I didn't know what to name the that. I I didn't know how to spell it. So. Got it. No, I got it. 
Ah, so Talon and Wifey are here. They are. They are indeed. And... So. All right. Does everyone see themselves on there at the moment? Uh, Serene is rather large. We can... Because she's the captain. Cut her down to size. All right. Is everyone <laughs> out there? I think I'm stuck underneath a Neris. But that's <laughs> fine. Ah. <laughs> no. That's funny. That's funny. And I don't think I'm in the turn tracker. Okay. Uh, so Ray and be the meat shield. What was your role in Eris? It was a 12. I mean, it was a 20. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Nice try. That's what the rogue would do. All righty. It looks like first up, if everyone sees themselves on the initiative tracker, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're good to go. First up is Melvin. And they've they've shouted something somewhat menacing at us, right? Yes. Okay, great. Um. I take my quill out. Um, I'm sorry about this. And I, I drop a little bit of ink into the air in front of me. Um, and it, it sort of balls up and then catches fire and starts to rotate around my head uh, as I cast Melvin's Minute Meteors. Ah. Um, Little Triple M. Yes. Uh, so I have six tiny meteors now made of ink floating around my head. Um, and then I will throw two of them, um, one at each group to land in those spaces. Okay. And, and is it deck everyone, saves in the area? Yeah. Dex saves within a five foot, um, radius. Okay. Um, we should probably ask questions the left ones I have a 15 and a 21 the right two I have 8 and a 3 okay um the 8 and the 3 both fail okay. so they'll take full damage everyone else takes half and oh, if you want right. me to roll separately for each meteor I can otherwise you can just take that 10 this is fine we'll just do it at the, as yeah. it is great Okay. It was just one meteor at each group, right? Is that how that works? Uh, what? Sorry. How many? You just fling one meteor here and one meteor there. Is that yes, how I that can works, throw or? two per turn. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. All yeah. right, that's done. Anything else, Melvin? Uh, nope. <clears throat> the group sort of starts to walk forward, and you see Talon, and he staggers forward a bit, a few burns coming from his flesh. He says, This cannot be stopped. It has happened for ages. But the time has finally come. Saltmarsh will be given to the depths, and we will rise. And suddenly, there's a line of blood that begins to form across the top of his forehead down his nose all the way down the front of his face and his skin starts to sort of bubble and change and become a little bit wavy and all of a sudden the entirety of the front of his face <laughs> splits open oh. revealing a giant maw of spiky teeth his hair begins to to um undulate on top of his head and grow out and these long sort of uh, stinger like tentacles um, start to come out from him and then <laughs> you hear a cracking of his bones as on his forearms fins <laughs> shoot out nope. he is changed immensely in front of you Grody. Ah, and then he Grody, walks Grody. forward and as his mouth spreads open, he lets forward an immense screech that deafens you and just 
even as you um, plug your ears, it seems to penetrate all of your senses. It's as if the scream is happening in your sight and the sound, you feel it cold and prickly and all against your skin and a sour taste in your mouth. And I need everyone um, to make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> Don't like that. I'm going to use my inspiration for this. I'm also going to use my inspiration. Wisdom Come saving. on, crack and die. Oh, are you oh. fucking kidding me? Wow. Okay. No way! Well, no way. I'm screwed. Bye. Same. Good luck. 13 everybody else. and um, I guess Doll needs to roll too, doesn't he? Oh, they all transform like that. They all, the three of them all step forward and do this mm-hmm. same. Does, uh, does Doll need to also forward them? roll? Yes. Uh, 12. Okay. Those of you rolling below a 13 are stunned Stunned. by the screeching sound. (sighs) Onk. As they march forward. And that is the end of their turn. You also see a familiar sight. The water behind in the lagoon to the right and left of this pillar begins to, bubbles begin to come up from the top. It was very similar when all of the folk, the sort of fish-like creatures arose during the ritual. And now starts to bubble and churn. Sarayan, you're up. Did you pass your That's wisdom it. saving throw? You Beginning did. of the round, because Pixie Winkwox has come in with 500 bits for a D20 inspiration for someone. You're oh right. my goodness, we don't have that many people who can do it, but we will. Uh, a lot of people have used, used mine. Used mine. Yeah, a few of you, a few of you have. Yeah. So, oh, but two more, I think. Pixie's coming with another one, another 500 bits. That's two people. Oh, what? That's ridiculous. Uh, Prion, do you have yours? I don't. All right, Mariah, do you have it? And Melvin, do you no, have I it? No, I don't. I do not. So there's three of us. Roll off. Well, <laughs> three seventeens. Amazing. That's wicked. Yes, please roll off, guys. Oh, God. Are you just going to roll again, or what are we rolling? I rolled What's a 20? 12. Okay. Roll a d20. All right. 17. Again. 17 again. All right. I got a five. Rion and um, Thank Mariah, you, you have inspiration. Thanks, Pixie. Thank you, Pixie. <laughs> <laughs> Ruin my fun like you ever could. All right. Um, Serene, it's your turn. Okay. So seeing these foes approach the party, Serene will hold her hand out and she will cast Wall of Water. And she's gonna do a ringed wall all around the group of water. Walla water. Walla water. Walla water. Walla water. Walla water. Interesting. Okay. Oh. Interesting. Right? It's difficult to ring, so. Okay. Yeah. So a ring around the group, you say? Mm-hmm. And it will be... Um, it can be up to 20 feet in diameter, but it'll be as large as it needs to be to, if it's less than 20 feet, um, to cover just everybody in the group. It's 20 feet high and one foot thick. Cool. Also, right. ranged weapon attacks um, have disadvantage on the attack roll. Fire damage is halved. Uh... Spells that deal cold damage that pass through the wall cause the area of the wall they pass through to freeze solid. Um, and I will just we'll get to that next time. Very small, but <laughs> it's nifty. Okay, that is cool. All right, so that wall <laughs> summons forth and creates that barrier between your friends and the danger that has just come. So very cool. Nether. Right. 
there is going to one, two, three, four, five, move to here, and she kneels down and um, clutches her shoulders and casts Armor of Agathus. We should have done that earlier. But I didn't. But now I have. Okay. It's your action, yes? Yes. The water continues to churn and you begin to see the tops of some heads appearing in um, the water. And you hear a voice booming out that says, Who disturbs our sacred place? Daenerys, you're up. Awesome. Could we disturb their slumber, perhaps? Hmm. <laughs> Daenerys will utter a few curse words in the ground and cast Bane on. I can make a pain. This one, this one, and this one. I think up to three within 30 feet. I have to do it. All right. You cast Bane. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yes. Is that wisdom or charisma saving throw? Charisma save. I have a 15, a 5, and a 14. Awesome. Well, we got one of them. So it looks All like right. it saves 13. Yes. Oh, uh, DM, does Dahl get to make a, um, a, a saving throw at the end of his turn, which would have been my turn? No. No. Okay. And Mor Moriah? I'm stunned, man. Are you stunned, Stunnerino? Yep. Alright. Stunnerino. I'm just kinda standing there like ah. Anyway. Um You will then see a figure walking up to the top of the rocks here. Raising his ah. arms on high. This is Arise, children of the Deep One. And though it water churning behind him begins to grow even more intense. Brian. Oh shit. Oh shit. Uh, I will move here and stab a bitch. Um, DM, are we going to need to lease for this? Uh, no. Uh, first attack. Oh, let me roll on screen. First attack. Try to. Uh, 14 to hit. Uh, it's 14 hits. Second attack. For 16. Both hit. No. 15 damage. Fifteen. Nice. You cut into this creature's form with two strikes. The scales and the hybrid form of this body seem quite resilient, um, but it takes the full damage of the strikes. My familiar flies down onto what's his face and causes a distraction, as I forgot to do it for okay. me. Uh, did your familiar make a save versus the stun? Oh, you got to do that for familiar as well, have you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Stats. Let me have a look. Oh, yes, I have. Uh, what is it? Uh, con save, yeah? No, wisdom. Wisdom. Yes. wisdom save, 16. All right. Your seagull is not stunned. Melvin, you are stunned for your turn. Yep. I lost concentration. The remainder of the uh, minute meteors uh, drop to the ground and splash harmlessly. Unfortunate. Do you lose concentration if you're stunned? Then? You're incapacitated. Incapacitated, oh, wow. yes. Yeah. The creatures being savvy, one moves forward and um, in this hybrid form takes attacks against Moriah. Eh. Am I still First stunned it, oh. at this point? Now yes. that my turn has passed? Okay. Does anything happen when you walk through the wall? It's difficult terrain. Oh, okay. 
So I have a 7, a 17, and a 22 to hit. Uh, two hits, one miss. All right. 11 points of slashing damage, and mm-hmm. just that. Yes. Um, this other one, two, three, four. Um, can, is, uh, doll still invisible, yeah? Is doll, you're muted, uh, you're muted sir. Um, concentration ends, yeah, doll would not be invisible. Ooh, so some of you are going to get a first view of doll. Like a <clears throat> very, very tiny child, um... Um, with a boyish and sort of a upturned nose and bright eyes, long tapered ears, um, and a shock of green hair with a um, like a, a, a anglerfish uh, lure that comes out with a light in front of it, and then from the nose down, just a mass of haphazard long teeth like an anglerfish, just protruding out, like completely undoing any charm in his eyes and his nose, and then a. Uh, humanoid body with um, wings um, like dragonfly wings on its back. He would probably be up high though. He would fall to the ground. He would fall to the ground. He cannot move unless, does he have a hover speed? He doesn't. Then he falls to the ground. Okay. The creature takes one attack against Doll with a 23 to hit. That's a hit. Does 10 points of slashing damage and then sure does. Doll <laughs> disappears. I'm getting hit again? Yes. Okay. Uh, this time is a, is a 21 <laughs> yeah. for 5 points of damage. Okay. I have no this AC in this game. Baned. We'll step forward here. The other two are going to um, step within here and attack. Uh, one's going to attack Prion, one's going to attack Anaris. The one that attacks Prion, regular attacks. Um, I have a 22, but I am baned, so that's going to be an 18. This misses. Misses. And then against Anaris, I have a, a 16 on a bite, and then a 10 and a 21 on a claw. As it tries to bite you and then reaches at you with both hands. I didn't. What, what was it to hit? Uh, uh, six, uh, sorry, 16, 10, and 21. 16 and 21 hit. Ooh, okay. Uh, 12 points of damage total. Oh. Two con saves. Mm hmm. Against the Bane. And then it's going to be Saraian's turn. The rest of you who are stunned become unstunned. Or everyone who's stunned becomes unstunned. Ow. So, <laughs> Sarayan, um, having seen Mariah take a lot of damage, is going to cast a Ubok Warding Bond. What does Warding Bond do? So, Warding Bond... Everything's rolling twice. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why. Um, but this spell wards a willing creature oh. you touch and creates a mystic connection between you and the target until the spell ends. While the target is within 60 feet of you, it gains a plus one bonus to AC and saving throws, and it has resistance to all damage. Also, each time it takes damage, you take the same amount of damage. The spell ends if you drop to zero hit points, or if you and the target become separated by more than 60 feet. It also ends if the spell is cast again on either of the connected creatures. You can also dismiss the spell as an action. Have you or the uh, party spent the gold for those rings? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Money. It's such uh, an object. It's an object to me now. Sorry, I forgot about those. That's all right. Would the well, would the party have contributed I, mutual gold for that spell? It's uh, how much? Uh, pair 50. Of, 
What? 100 so gold. It's 100? Yeah. Um, we could definitely afford that. Um, and I think that's a worthwhile thing to fund. Okay. So. We'll have said we can add that to last week's shopping. And, uh, 100 gold. And Sarayan quick passes you a ring. Yeah. I just slide <laughs> it right on your finger. Yeah. <laughs> you feel emboldened. We're by bonded. It. We're bonded now. <laughs> You're not sure what presence. to think about it, but you do feel protected. <laughs> Stay close. We're bonded. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, I don't know if this is possible. But... She's definitely too young for me. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but because, okay, I could I, since I just cast a spell as my action, do a bonus action? That's another spell or no? Only not if a it's a can't. Uh, no, actually you can't. Okay, yeah. dope. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, any movement? You want to reposition it all, or are you good there? Uh, let me see. I will reposition to go stand in front or next to Mariah. Okay. Nether. Sight disappears. Ah, Your this is familiar changed. has seen darkness, and this is not darkness. This is nothing. This is a problem. <laughs> Um. Uh, question. She, what happens to his darkness spell that you cast on that uh, shell? That's a good question. So if he, I, I mean, when you I summon the, you moved it out of the way. When yeah, I mean, it, it was the, he he had put it on his person. So usually, when you summon or on something, something like like he doesn't drop his sword or his bow when he goes away. So, so then he still has it, and so he gone. would still have it, except he's just in the other he's in the other dimension now. Or he was killed, that it fell to the ground, and darkness sprung up all over. That place. seems a little more complicated. Likely, you think? Okay odd enough as that is so yeah you all um we won't do anything retroactively but a enormous globe of darkness will pop into existence I where like doll fell so right there wow <laughs> 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 Exciting! Um, Nether would That's have no. Ne all Nether knows is that Doll disappeared, and she can't see anything. So she whirls around and holds out her hand and squints and shoots a Eldritch blast at um, the fighting she hears right in front of her. Okay. We're gonna go with Eldritch Blast at disadvantage. Right, so that's going to be a 11 to hit. 11 is the AC. No AR. kidding. She gets yeah. to get. She gets another another blast at level four, I think. Yep, at level five. But yeah, level five. All right. So, uh, oh, damage. Um, so, why did it roll twice? It's one d. It's one d ten, right? Yeah. Yes. So, that doesn't make. So, all right. I'll just roll. Let's so six points of damage, and then six points of damage. All right, and then the second hit. Uh, well, if an 11 hit, then a 16 will also hit. Okay, yeah, roll damage. And for this, I'll just do three points of force damage. Okay. The now blind nether is nonetheless able to um, pummel the um, creature in front of her with these two Eldritch Blasts. Serene, I believe warding bond is concentration, yes? No? It's an hour duration. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's You're right. No concentration. Spell. Wow. Resistance to all damage, too. Wow. Oh, but you take it. Interesting. 
I don't use that one much, so. Cool. Anything else from Nether? No, Nether is done. Um, she st- stumbles with the water on her side and just sort of moves to here. Hmm. All right. These creatures begin to slowly march forward, emerging from the water. as it continues to churn and the Kraken Priest reaches up to the sky and you see storm clouds beginning to form. All right. Inaris, it's your turn. It's my turn. Okay, so I don't have the AC to be this close. Attack of opportunity, watch out. Although he couldn't see you, baby. Huh? Do I get to move? Or am I getting attacked? Um, oddly enough, none of them would be able to see you. Yes. Un- until you're out of here, you'd be, yeah, you'd be clear. So. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have one to two screen slots. I'm going to attack with my short bow. Is anybody engaged with this one right here towards the edge that would let me use my sneak attack? Mm-hmm. Oh, I am. Be honest. Mm-hmm. You can see this handsome chap here. Why is that not? It's just my damage. I didn't have There we go. I think. <laughs> I'm not seeing an attack. I just saw the damage. Yeah, it's a thing. It's nine, a nine oh hit. nine. Uh, Unfortunately, nine does not hit. Okay. All right. Uh, Any bonus actions? Uh, don't no. Just have spare the dying, and nobody's dying yet. Okay. Mariah, you are enveloped in darkness. Yeah, I'm not really about that. I'm gonna lie. Um, pardon me. I lost track of something in my character sheet that I'm trying to find. Um. All right. Slippery character sheets. <laughs> um, being aware of its presence in front of me, um, though I cannot see it, um, I will I uh, call forth this discordant melody that the uh, horrible, horrible creature in front of me uh, can hear. Uh, and I will need it to make a wisdom saving throw against dissonant whispers. Okay, you don't uh, need to be able to see it? Nope. I whisper I, a creature of my choice within range that can hear. Oh, nice. So, um, I'm going to cast it at second level, so it'll be an additional d6 in addition to what's going to come up here in a hot second. Alright, we've got 13 on the save. Uh... Ooh. 15 is the DC, so a total of 17 points of psychic damage. All right, and this was against uh, Mr. Talon himself. <clears throat> ah. Who then Bastard. runs away, I believe, yes? Oh, yes. Uh, he take, take needs to then. scooch. You cannot see him, Prion. He's next to me. Now I'll get this fight, will I? You have to be able to see a creature to take an attack of opportunity. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Cool beans. Anything else from Mariah? Um, I don't really like where I am right now. So I kind of like find Serain in the darkness and kind of give her a pat. Thank you. And <laughs> I'm going to exunt. Not pursued, pursued by bear. Pursued by bear. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm gonna find. I'm gonna come over here, up next to Nether, and like put it, put my hand on her shoulder to let her know that I'm there. <laughs> she it's me. turns around. <laughs> you see, green ball of energy in her hand. Yep, it's me. Okay. Dolls down. I got you. Okay. The the and darkness. It, and I drop darkness. <laughs> <laughs> the priest then continues chanting in an sort of obscure language to the sky and dark storm clouds are now circling and 
lightning is beginning to flash in the clouds above you. Oh, I don't know how. It's encompassing the whole island. Prion. Um, okay, I... My seagull comes down and flies down to the one that's baned in front of me. Mm-hmm. And I will attack with my first attack. Advantage. Oh my god, I rolled a natural one and an eight. But it is plus six. It's 14. That hits. Uh, is that going to roll the damage? Oh. I don't know why I did that. Oh, right, it it's the same roll anyway. <laughs> um, but five damage for the first attack. You get another plus... Wait, what the... No, I, I saw an eight on the die. Yeah, I tried to do the damage here. and it rolled to hit. But I, I, I rolled my thingy dice. And I right, rolled, right, right, right. I, I, I rolled an eight yourself. anyway. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But obviously that's cool. that was a two. Uh, and my next attack was a 13 plus six, 19. And... That's another nine points of damage to the same one okay. I've hit. Ooh. I've hit four times yep. now. It is looking rough. 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 Melvin. No longer stunned, right? Correct. I've missed one turn. Great. Uh. Well. Hmm. I uh. Uh, if I step here and use a uh, ten-foot cube, can I place it on a diagonal to hit both enemies without hitting Prion? Um. So you're thinking like ten-foot cube. Um, you want to diamond it? Yeah. yeah. Like that? Like that. Um, I'm fine with that, but it's, you know, for spells moving forward, that's going to be the same thing, you know, for mm -hmm. any casters Enemies on my yeah. side of the, the um, table. So, yes. Cool. Um, I'm going to cast uh, Thunder Wave um, using... Uh, cold damage, uh, okay. which may or may not, depending on your um, ruling, cause some interesting uh, effects here with the wall of water. Yeah. Because uh, it freezes solid, and there are enemies inside that wall at the moment. Hmm. And I don't really know how that's going to work, but it seemed interesting. <laughs> I like it. Oh, I like Let's it. Let's see Spells that deal cold damage that pass through the wall cause the area of the wall they pass through to freeze solid. Each five foot frozen square. Huh. All right. And they're pushed back as well? Uh, they have to make a con save? Con save. DC right, 15 to avoid let's it. Let's see what happens there first. Mm -hmm. um, I have a 17 and a 12. Uh, the 12 so will one... fail. Will, uh, one's uh, got Bane. Get some solid wall portions. What's that? One's got Bane. Uh, the 12 has a Bane, so the 12 is the, the failure. Um, freezing is solid, so if this one was knocked back, I would say that it might take some damage impacting on the wall, but this one is already on the out, pretty much on the outside, so as it flies backwards, um, be stuck outside the wall. How far does it get thrown out? I believe it's just uh, 10 feet. Yeah, 10 feet. Okay. I just wasn't sure if freezing the wall while they're like partially inside the wall would like freeze them in place or something. That's all. Um, usually when walls appear, you get to just basically choose which side you're on. Gotcha. Um, That's fine. It's cool, but... Yeah. You know, actually, roll a... Let's roll a 50-50 for this guy. Um, okay. If you crack in it, he is trapped on the inside of the wall and squeezing. If not, then he's pushed to the outside. Oh, you mean like a, a D2. Gotcha. A D2, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, Kraken. It's a one. 
All right, he is pushed then to the outside of the wall. But and that is solid. those two five foot squares then are frozen solid. Yes, I assume they are. And you have solid cover there. Cool. Uh, what was the damage on that again? Fourteen. All right. Fourteen. Um, I don't think it's a f- safe for half. I think it's. Ooh, might be wrong. Hold on. Half as much on a save. Yes. Yeah. Um, this one is thrown back, the baned one, the baned unnamed one, and as it is, it is um, you kind of break a portion of that jaw off, and you see this figure tumbling back, and as it falls to the ground, you see just the form of a woman laying there. No yeah. mutations, nothing. She seems to be a completely normal human woman lying broken on the sand. Ah, I wondered what would break first. Ow. <laughs> All right, this one that was next to always funny to me. Attack upon you, Serean. I have a bite and two claws. Oh my goodness. Um, I have a eighteen, a twenty-four, and a twenty-two. What's your AC? Ay ay ay. Oh, I see. She should be twenty-one. I didn't know what the fingers meant. I just was here. <laughs> I was seeing. She should be armor class 21, I believe. Plate and a shield. Yeah, 21. Okay. That's you great. Got, so you, got you will on, then. You? Does, that, does that do anything? Yeah, to but you? the warding is. It oh, doesn't yeah. affect nice. me, it just nice. affects Mariah. Uh, for 12 points of slashing damage total. This one will run back forward here, step inside, continue to attack you, Prion. Bite two claws. I've got a 24, a 10, and a 21. A shield shimmers in front of me. And all of them miss? Yes. Yes. Cool. While this one... Hmm... Let's see. I'm going to come here and attack the mage. That seems like a good idea. Um, Z has just pointed out that Serene is concentrating. Ah, Serene, please make um, a pair of concentration checks. Constitution saving throws. And for the record, my um, AC is actually 20. Sorry, not 21. Okay. I don't think it affects that, but... Uh, but... She Indeed. has the dueling fighting style, not defense. Oh, of course, I've got defense. Yes, I forgot about that. I think maybe it rolled twice on, yeah, by itself. Seven and six. <laughs> Unfortunately, L-O-L. the wall then drops. Yeah, classic. What happened with Eight the ice? Away. Yeah, we're not having good luck with these concentration checks today. Yeah. Would, would the ice stay? Um. Good question. Yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? Because you've, because you've essentially destroyed that part of the water. Uh, uh, magic. The, uh, the wall vanishes when the spell ends, so the spell has ended. But not in my heart. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn. Oh, great. Um, um, you were attacking me, I thought. I was. I interrupted oh, you. Oh, I almost forgot. Bring that up. Uh, yeah, oh, I had three man. attacks. They were a 9, a 16, and a 15. Uh, the 16 meets beats, so I think you said a 9, a 16, and a 15? Yeah. Yeah, so only the 16 will hit. Okay, so the 16 was a claw. Eight points of damage. Okay. Now it's Serene's turn. Yay! Okay, so the first thing that I would like to do is use my bonus action to cast Divine Favor, which will let me add 1d4 radiant damage on a hit for weapon attacks. Um, And then, so I have a question. So underneath my actions panel for like special, 
Yeah. I have extra attack. So it says I can attack twice instead of once whenever I take the attack action on my turn. Yeah. So yep. I could just attack twice, correct? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I will then be boot bot. Ah. Sorry, the screen, the map disappeared and then reappeared. So I will do that lovely little thing that I do and hit the one right in front of me with my long sword. Okay. You want to just use those two divine <laughs> favor rolls you had before and just add it to it then? Um, It's up to you. Um, so 25 and 13 both are going to hit. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, and that's fine. I'll just use those two. Okay, um, this one's been undamaged. Uh, 21 plus 5. So... Huge 26 points of damage. Okay. And yes. And so then that is those two rolls. Yeah. yeah. Because Great. I rolled it twice. Okay. Cool. Awesome damage there. That's me. And brings us to Nether. There's someone chanting over there. Okay. Take that as a yes. Yep. She up on the hill. Runs forward to here. Is that all right? Yeah. Mm hmm. All right. Okay, cool. And uh, I will shoot twice in the direction of the chanting that I hear. All right. Make that roll. Make the attack roll a disadvantage. Still pretty good. 12 on the die. Plus 7 to hit. So 19. That will hit. All right one point of force damage second bolt yeah, that's gonna miss nine nine does miss a you can't see the creature damage. but you can't help but think that its gaze has become focused upon you uh. insolent and the creatures start to stagger forward in your direction. One, two, three. One, two, three, two. One gets in range. Uh, where'd you go? Here you go. Um, and we'll attack with poison quills that seem to jut out of its wrists. Seven. Oh, advantage. I have an eight. <laughs> the eight misses. Um, and then it just starts to claw at you on arm strikes. Wow. High of 12 on my All right. next attack. It's a miss. Yikes. All right. That doesn't work out so well. That is their movement and stuff. They are rapidly encroaching upon all of you. All right. It is um, Inaris' turn. Awesome. Inaris is going to draw her short sword and attack this bad boy right here. Right in the front. And let's roll it correctly this time. That is a 19 to hit. Uh, yeah, 19 hits. And some screens. Get out of the way. Bam. I do my own sound effects. Ooh. Hey. Yes. So, that with my sneak attack damage, that is 20 total damage. As this one staggers forward and starts to claw into Melvin, you just take an opportunity and stick your short sword straight through its chest, and it kind of tenses for a moment and then falls limp. Nice. You hear <laughs> Thank uh, you. the uh, voice of Talon, though corrupted. <gasps> As you have slain Gria Chandler where she stayed, where she um, sat. And indeed, as she falls, her body seems to revert 
to exactly as you knew her before. Unchanged. Uncorrupted. I'll shake the blood off my sword. All right. Mariah! Um, question. Um, if I drag someone, um, do they, and they move out of an enemy's range, do they in incur an attack of opportunity? No. Um, but to be truly forced movement in that way, I would say you will have to try to grapple them to do so. Um, oh, okay. Because otherwise, if it's just a consensual yep. pull, then that is sort of like that. That that I, that to me wouldn't fall under the category of forced movement. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? That makes in total sense. Yeah. Yes. Um. I uh, let's see. I will move myself here. Um. Let another know that I'm behind her. There's a lot of dudes. Got it. Shit. Uh, la, 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 la. Brian, I know you want me to do something else, but I'm going to try a different thing first. <laughs> um, where are my spell thingies? Do I have a spell thingy? I thought I had a spell thingy. Do you have spell templates in this game? <laughs> I do. What do you need? Uh, sleep. I bought the cube. Is, it a, is it a cube? It is. Um, 20, 20 foot circle. Oh my gosh. 20 foot. The creature's within 20 feet of a point that I choose. Um, uh -huh. So I think here would be potentially everyone. Yeah. That would be a pretty good sleep. Yeah. So. Oh, it's even one bigger. Uh, I think. Yeah. So I'm cast it at third level. So there's the 5d8 and then two more 2d8s. Oh, that's really bad. Um, so it's Ow. 20. Mm, 28. I think. Yep, 28. That's, yeah. Oh, it's better than nothing. 28. Mm. Um, in that case, one of these falls asleep. Okay. Um, you rolled, you, yeah, you rolled 98. It's, tw it's, it's 22. What? No, it should be 98 if I she cast at the third level. level. Oh, sorry, yeah. I thought you meant to say it. My bad. I got confused too. Yeah, <laughs> right that's there <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. So I got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna roll a non-existent dice. One. This one falls asleep. Which one? Over uh, the furthest to the left. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Nether if she wants to move with me basically asking Sean, are you willing to take an attack of opportunity or do you want to stay put? Um, I'll stay put. Okay, then I'm going to use the rest of my movement and get farther up the hill. Okay. I don't know if these bushes are actually there, but if they are, I'll kind of crouch down. Mm. They are. Yeah, you have a little partial cover. Cool. The spell from the priest completes, and suddenly the lightning storm takes full effect as he casts the spell. Water spell? Are you in... I guess you're in range, huh? Uh, I don't know if I had to cast to counter it when no, he started casting. No, it was or... a little bit of a flavor thing, but yes, your counter spell takes effect. <laughs> oh, thank God. Yay! And now his... Now his ire turns towards <laughs> you. Freon, zap. Oh, Melvin, go. Um, go, Melvin, go. Not a third level slots, though, so... <laughs> well spent. Seeing yeah. the danger that Nether is in, I am going to... Charge. She's a big girl now. 
I know. Okay, I'll stay. Do, no, do what, do what Prion would do. Uh, or, yeah, what Prion would do. He it, would charge it it straight down to there, taking the attack of opportunity from him. What's his face? Talon. From Talon. He's gonna bite you. With an eight. <laughs> I bite him back. Um, and I will hit red as I spear him as I come past. I, obviously, yeah. my bird comes down. Oh, fuck, I keep rolling natural one. Uh, the other one was a nine plus six. It's 15. Yeah. I think you ordered new dice if you're rolling natural ones. I keep rolling natural <laughs> I've got so few Krakens. Uh, oh my god. And you know my D6s? I always say I roll three. Yeah, I rolled a three. Um, six damage on that. And I hit it. Uh, if it's still up, I hit it again. Not an advantage mm -hmm. this time. Oh my god, I rolled a two. Yeah, that's me done. come out to be? Oh, All right. It's, it's going to be an eight. Uh, yep, yeah, doesn't do it. Melvin! Um, just for flavor, uh, the somatic component for my counter spell is opening my book up and flipping the pages so they go all the way through the book and it sucks in the magic. Oh, nice. Um, that's fun. It's not like, just, just not like a fun. flip, not like a flip uh, animation thing. Watch, <laughs> watch it. Watch it. In the cor doodles in the corners. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and it, it's really just funny. a finger going like this. Like yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, or a slow uh, middle finger. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyways, um, yeah, I'm out of third level slots. That's not fun. Um, I will trust that my my uh, slightly more tanky friends will take care of all the things in front of me, and I will uh, hold my quill like a dart and make a motion like I'm going to throw it at this guy up here as I cast Scorching Ray. Oh. Um, three rays of fire. Oof. Mm. Ooh, that's a nine to hit the, for the first. Um, that's not good. Okay, 24 for the 24 second. And the third is uh, oh. not much. 11. Um, the 11 actually hits. Oh, great. Touch it. So... We've got ooh, five damage from the second and six from the third for 11 points of fire damage. Okay. He takes the full brunt. Awesome. And that brings us That'll to the, the deep scions. As two of them have been slain. Um, yeah, we should probably try and get Talon alive so that we don't have to tell his daughter that we killed their entire family. He wanted to run away from them. Yeah. She's also, like, watching this from the ship, right? I was like, I don't know that she'd be that broken up about it. <laughs> it's not that close, but maybe. Uh, uh, let's see. Saran, I've got one. I attack you with its full multi-attack. I have an 8, 14, and 22. Only the 22. 22, I believe, hits for 8 points of damage. Okay. And, well, you are the target in range, so they are going to continue. Love it. You. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, I have a 12, 12, and 10. So the, both of those ah, miss. That fools. is some scions as they rage fools. at you. Fools. Uh, you dare underestimate my power. What is your rebuttal? Uh, my rebuttal is this. Rebuttal. But, um, I am going to... Okay, so I do have a question. So, because I'm trying to remember where this happened. So, would, when I got hit this time also, I had my uh, Divine Favor up? And that's also a concentration. So, would that have been a separate roll? Or would that have been part of the roll that I did for the No, you ball? did that after you lost concentration on the one. So, you did roll right now for a concentration Okay. Check. Great, yeah. great, great, great. Did she take damage? Just I now. did. She, yeah. She oh, took okay. one of the six attacks hit her. Gotcha. Okay, sorry. Um, my D and D Beyond for a second was like, bye. Um, okay, so con saving throw? 
Yes. E. Uh, why does it do it twice? Uh, <laughs> five and ten. Oh, it's Ryan. Unfortunately, L-O-L. the five is not going to do it, and you lose divine favor. Well, guess what? I have more where that came from. So it's a cantrip, isn't it? It is not, but oh. I don't have that many first level spells that I care about casting. So it makes it pretty easy. All right. Um, so I will, Sarayan will again cast Divine Favor upon herself. Okay. Good grief. I don't know why it's doing everything twice. You're good. Lay down um, those attacks. It's only making me annoyed. <laughs> Uh, let's see. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. Which one are you attacking? Uh, Talon is to your right. Or your left, I guess, if you're facing forward. Sure, sure, (laughs) sure, The right of your token. Yes. Um, eh, I'll attack not Talon for the point that another made. The one in front. Okay. Um, so... Hit it with my long sword. I'm just gonna roll it twice. A Two 12 hits. and 19. Oh, great. Um, yes. And then those three and the two. With the second slice, the cre- or the first slice bends the creature over and with an uppercut with the sword, you slice up through the torso and straight through the neck, nearly decapitating it and sending it reeling back into its original Ew. form dead <laughs> remember you can choose to do a non-lethal damage to knock out just oh I didn't know that yeah well this one's been nearly decapitated what's done is done <laughs> yeah that, that's yeah. <laughs> got it if you remember guys Serene isn't super awesome at taking prisoners she <laughs> she got a little <laughs> <laughs> She got a little kill happy on the last time. You guys were trying to do that. So. Nether. <laughs> so Nether uh, crouches down and looks down, and then she stands up very quickly, and a blast of water just shoots her up into the air, and she moves around these creatures coming to here. Okay. Uh, what is it? Are you using fly? No, I I just moved. I'm using flavor, but I I did move. Casey. Okay. I'm Cast trying to flavor. Think. I'm using flavor. <laughs> it did provoke one attack of opportunity. I'm seeing. Right. Okay. This one will use its uh, uh, poison quills again. Oh, uh, twenty-two to hit. Twenty-two is a hit. Six points of poison damage, and I need a constitution saving throw. He takes ten points of cold damage. Ah. Constitution saving throw. Yes. Plus zero. Kraken. Oh, you are not poisoned. (laughs) And as she's lifted up in the air, it suddenly comes down, and as it does from underneath her, um, these large tendrils of... uh, uh, seaweed shoot out in 10 feet radius all around her um, and strike everything, including you, Prion. So sorry. Uh, she says, Do them on Galach! And as the um, tendrils strike, dark pulsating energy shoots out along the edges and doing necrotic damage. Ooh, is it a save that I have to do? Nope. It's a area. I well, it's gotta be a save. It's gotta be a save. It's gotta be. Let's see. Uh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? There it is. Um, strength saving throw. Okay. Oh. Uh, is your DC 15 now? Yes. Okay. I have two fails. I have. 19 points of necrotic damage. Ooh. It absolutely crushes the one that hit you. Damages some of the others. Wow. That was a massive roll, my friend. Indeed it was. Just 
just five points shy of max, I guess. Yeah. I take uh, I take so half. So we've got. Yeah, if you succeed, yeah. you take half. Uh, and then this one wakes. It's nope. not within ten feet. Never mind. It's still asleep. Ha! <laughs> I helped. <laughs> You did. Uh, anything else from Nether? Nope, that's it. Revenge. Um, all right. We will have this one has a tentacle. Uh, twenty-four to hit. That is a hit. Six bludgeoning damage. Takes ten you points are... of cold damage. Ow! Wow! Ow! Ow! And that is armor. I get this is now gone. You are grappled. Grappled, eh? And I'm going to try to hit you with unarmed strike. 15. Is it? Another six points of bludgeoning. Got it. The other one moves forward with a large fish like mouth to bite. 22 to hit. Is Five it? points piercing. Got it. It's unarmed strike. 12. 12 does not hit. Uh, one of these, let's see. Oh, one of these is going to climb up and go towards Mariah. Do poison quills. Slower. Seven. Yeah, that's hit. And a 12 unarmed strike doesn't hit. Prion, nope. I've got a bite, two unarmed strikes. I do not get north of 20, so I don't hit you. And then the last one coming at you, Nether, has a bite. Critical hit. Uh oh. I'm going to do seven points. <laughs> that's a. It's not fun. Of uh, piercing damage, and then unarmed strike for a six. So. Missed. Which one took Ooh. the um, armor of Agatha's damage? Right. The one right here. Got it. Which is grappling you with a tentacle. New problem. The tentacles uh, from her spell are still writhing underneath her as if ready to cast again. Okay. Hence why they are all attacking you. Inaris, you're up. Alright. Um, Daenerys will draw a short bow and get the one right in front of Saran. That is Mr. Talon. Sorry, Mr. Talon. Sorry, Knock not him out. Sorry. Knock him out. Non lethal. Can't do it with a bow, just so you know. Yeah. Oh. Can't do it with a bow. Yeah, 15 to hit. Hits. Sweet. I always have spare the dying, though. 16 points of damage if I get my sneak attack. You do. Uh, 16 is not quite enough to kill him. Okay. Okay. My god. And anything else from Mineris? So that is... That's it for now. Yeah. Mariah. Alright. Senor right in front of me. I don't appreciate your presence. His ears are gonna hurt really bad here. As I whisper another discordant melody into his mind. Ooh. Roll a wisdom save. Six. Fail. 14 points of psychic damage. Run the fuck away. Ouch. It's almost enough to. Outright. No, that is. Yeah, that's right. The, damn it, that's enough to outright out kill him. His ears oh, just sweet. start bleeding and he collapses to the ground. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oops. Now that! Whack all their faces into the sand, you badass! <laughs> inspiration. Thank you. Hmm. I'm All right. Put behind my little bushes. There you go. Nice. The Kraken Priest begins to cast another spell, and similar tentacles begin to form around Inaris and <gasps> Melvin. No. I will need a strength, uh, a dexterity saving throw. I've got a 17. Nice. All right. And it looks like uh, Chael just walked away. Ah, gotcha. Well, we will get to her in a moment, mm -hmm. but you are unrestrained. 
Creon, it is your turn. Hmm. <clears throat> I will attack red again with the same method. I rolled a All 14, right. so that's a dirty 20. That's seven damage. And then I'm going to hit, is it if it's still up? Seven damage kills him. And then I will hit the one, the other one that's been hitting Nether here. That's a seven on the dice, plus six, 13. Yeah, hits. Really? Wow. Uh, five damage. You slay two of them. Nice. Thanks to the massive damage that Nether had done to a lot of them before. And... Oh, I killed that one as well. Well, okay. Um... Yeah. Can I get to the priest? I take it he's up high. Yeah. Uh, this is about a 15-foot um, climb up. Uh, how far is he? Sorry, one second. 25. I'm going Just to... Just eat yourself up there. It's fine. Uh, but he's casting a, he's cast a spell. As well. <laughs> I'm going to action surge and throw my trident at him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little Britain. <laughs> uh, that <laughs> is <laughs> armor class no. nine, 19. No, like mm, yeah, it's definitely. Hit. Uh, max damage of nine. Okay. And then I literally just put it back to my hand and then stab the one next to me. <laughs> cool. That's so cool. Uh, oh, unless, yeah. Can I throw it again? I can throw it again, yeah? It's a bonus action to resummon it? Bonus action to resummon it, yeah. Yeah, then you can throw it again. I'll throw it again at the same thing. That's cool. That's an 18 on a dice. Yeah. Uh, and oh, minimum damage of four. Mm. It was out. cool, though. Um, and I'm just going to stay there. I know that I'm probably going to take damage from Nether, but I stay there to give him something to hit. Gotcha. He maintains concentration. Melvin. Um. You well, at the beginning of Chelsea your needs turn. Chelsea needs uh, to roll a thing. A what? Chelsea needs to roll her saving throw. Oh, oh yeah. please roll a uh, dexterity saving throw, Chelsea. Oh. Okay. Gotcha, Melvin. You are um. Uh, you are unrestrained by the tentacles. Oh, you are. You can move freely. Okay. Um, and I don't have to make a save at the beginning of my turn. No, you. I. You didn't need to do it when the spell was cast. I. Uh, oh. Okay. Made a mistake there. So your, gotcha. your save works. No worries. Um, I will uh, play some more darts. I'm gonna hold my quill up and throw a couple of scorching rays at the spellcaster up on the on the cliff there. All right. Um so that's a 14 to hit, which I think will hit. Uh-huh. Great. Yeah. For 10 damage, nice. Beautiful. A 25 to hit. Uh-huh. For 7. And a 19 to hit for 6 damage. Beautiful. 26 turn. points of damage there as these three bolts <laughs> impact him one after another. 23. 23. Uh, yes. Indeed. Cool. Awesome. Uh, that'll be my turn. Alright. <clears throat> Talon looks around beginning to look a bit panicked. How can we he tell? Is... What? How can we tell he's looking panicked in the face like that? <laughs> what no, ta Talon is, is the game. one. Does, it does he do the, the Zoidberg? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and begin to flee. Sarayan, you're up. Oh, he begins to flee, does he? Mm -hmm. um, does that Brand. mean I get an attack of opportunity? He, he Use the disengage option. 
beans. Okay. Well, run after him. <laughs> what I'm going to, I mean, I could, I could. <laughs> um, yeah. How far did he get? Where would he go? He's only over, over here. here. He was a quick little little guy. I don't know if I can, can I get you can over totally there. Totally get to him. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm really tired. Okay. Uh, that guy's asleep. Wait, what? This guy. He's- this guy oh. is one of the, the little beans, and he's asleep on the ground. Oh, he's conked okay. out. All right, little bean. Taking a nap. All right, little nap bean. Okay, um, so I'm going to catch up to him, and then I'm going to... Oh, I don't know why. I don't know why. That's not what I'm going to I'm going to shout why. out after Saran. Uh, try to keep him alive if you can. <laughs> that was definitely the plan. <laughs> She's... Okay! <laughs> Um, and I'm going to lop his head off. No, uh, I'm going to um, use my long sword. Um, But again, actually, no. We're going to unarm strike him and I'm going to strike him twice. And the divine favor should still hold, correct? Um... Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Grief. Bonk. Okay, so that is a 23 to hit and a 20 to hit. Nice. And then my divine thingy, divine favor. Are you punching him or hitting him with your longsword? I'm, Ching. I think, slapping him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Across the face. You can do that too, I guess. And <laughs> don't. But kill those are enough. Um, babies. <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. Don't kill As babies. As he cries out with a screech to try and um, and to summon help, you at the end of it, you just whoo, take a fist to the top of his tentacled head, and he slumps down unconscious. Noise. I turn nice around. Down. Look, I I didn't kill him. We're really proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The, you can see the Kraken priest looking around and the um, as he let out a screech falling unconscious um, he right before that he mentioned no way! Um, my family come come protect this place and more of these creatures a couple more heads begin to emerge from the lagoon one of them being the unchanged face of um, mm. the woman you saw before. Elsie. Almost another uh, half dozen or so begin emerging from the lagoon, like I said. And in her arms, seemingly still alive, is the child that she took with her down into the ritual. She emerges from behind. And as it's getting late, I think as stage two begins to unfold with these other creatures coming up onto the beaches, we are going to leave it until next week. Yep. Yep.